It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. We've got a great show planned for you. My good buddy, uh, Mike Elgin, stops by. Becky Worley from Good Morning America. And Greg Farrell from the Packet Pushers. He's always fun. We'll talk about mixed and virtual reality and Apple's ambitions in that space. Apple has ambitions to go after Netflix, too. And did Fark get farked? Or is it really their fault? The discussion's next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit This Week in Tech, episode 597, recorded Sunday, January 15th, 2017. Fark Google. This Week in Tech is brought to you by SeatGeek. Get the best deal on sports, concert, and theater tickets with SeatGeek. To get $20 back on your first SeatGeek purchase, download the SeatGeek app and use the offer code TWIT. And by Texture. Access the world's most popular magazines anytime, anywhere, using your smartphone or tablet. Try it free for 14 days at texture.com slash twit. And by IT Pro TV, an easy, entertaining approach to online IT training. Visit itpro.tv slash twit and use the code twit30 for a free seven-day trial and 30% off the lifetime of your account. And by Tracker, a coin-sized tracking device that pairs with your smartphone and keeps you from losing your most valued possessions. Visit the tracker.com right now and enter the promo code TWIT to receive a free Tracker Bravo with any purchase. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we talk about the latest tech news, and we're all in studio today, which I love. Mike Elgin is joining us. He is a regular contributor to Computer World, now Fast Company. Fast Company, et cetera. And uh, yeah, Digital Nomad, uh, I've got uh, Elgin.com where I put all my stuff, if anybody's interested in and, my stuff. And you've been staying here because you have a new granddaughter. Uh, that's one reason. We're Princess zipping up some stuff, face. but we're also planning 2017. We're going to be all over the world again. Nice. It's going to be really great, starting with probably starting with Venice, which is nice. Oh, it's been <laughs> how hard. Oh, how it's tough. Oh, dear. It's oh, I don't know. You know, people are moving out of Venice because so, 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 there's no big shopping malls. That's and it's just so hard. <laughs> where am I? Where are gonna get? Where am I gonna get my blue jeans? I just, it's not. I don't want to live there. Uh, Becky Worley, good to have you, Mike. Becky Worley's also here. Another dear friend from ages gone by. She's the big time host, tech reporter at Good Morning America. We're seeing you every day now. Yeah, I'm not quite at host status. I'm, I'm knocking on Michael Strahan and Robin. Do Rodgers. they have like a hierarchy? Like, are you junior host? Oh, no. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the way C team on the West Coast, and I love it. Our West Coast C <laughs> team. under the radar at 2.30 no, in the morning. because they clearly love you because you're yeah. on all the time. I wake up a lot and have the 440 live shots, so wow. I'm doing the morning thing. But there's so that. much interesting consumer technology, consumer technology news, and it's really fun to bring that into a mainstream uh, perspective. Um, and then get to come do this and geeky podcasting with you. And I just noticed, but there's a little tribute. If you look in your shot to call for help, Ooh, uh, remember on the old call for help show, we had a kind of a window like the one behind oh, you. Yeah. And there was a, it was a fake tree branch <laughs> with a string on it. And every once in a while, somebody would, every time you walk by, you should just tug the branch yeah, to make right. it look like. Windy. Yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, I mentioned that. And apparently our staff has decided to put a fake nice. tree branch in the window That's behind you. Aw. <laughs> so, it looked a little bit like a bird that had hit the window. It doesn't. It really, it doesn't. <laughs> It could be anything, pretty much. It's uh, yeah. it's a tribute, though, yeah. to call for help. Think of it that way. A tribute. That's also here, uh, I'm thrilled to have Greg Farrell back. He is uh, the host of the Packet Pushers Network. Thank you. IT uh, and enterprise tech guru. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's good to be back. Brilliant. It's been fella. a while. I was nice lu lucky to be here in the valley, and I couldn't couldn't hold myself back from coming up to see what's going on. Were you here for work? Yeah, I'm doing a, a working with some of the startups in the valley this week. And then I'm doing a, a social media tour of about a dozen uh, technology startups in my field. Oh, that's fun. Yes. So you actually, you don't, you're not just a podcaster, you actually work. 
Mm, well, this is podcasting, so part of my media presence is to get in front of the vendors and learn right. about their technology. So right. I'm a. But do you work? I mean, do you consult? And I do, do a stuff? consult and analyze. Yeah. I'm, I advise a number of companies about their technology strategies. Big and networks yes. too. I mean, not just yes. yeah. Big so stuff. I'm working uh, on one of the biggest, highest performance compute labs in the UK right now, nice. working on their next supercomputer build out, which is really interesting. And I have a number of companies that I advise to keep my hand in as a professional yeah. network engineer or an enterprise IT engineer. And then, but my real full time job is the podcast. And yeah. I'm, I want to keep my finger on the pulse of real technology, not just, you know, become a podcast host who's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> which is the risk. He's looking yeah. at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I take that a little personally. Yeah. <laughs> Packetfishers.net. No, no, it's all right. It's well, you know what the chat it's room's okay. like. I mean, Pat, the chat it's room okay. will tell. They'll keep you honest. Yeah, they, they do. Well, yeah. What's interesting about what you do is that you do so much call in, actual help, yes. help me figure stuff out. And also, the radio I show. work with like Steve Gibson and and mm -hmm. uh, Paul Thorat and uh, Mary Jo Foley. And so by working with all these people who yeah. really are covering these stories. It keeps me up to date. Yeah, anybody who's doing this is doing keeping up to date somehow. Though. Yeah, right. you got to keep up to date. But yeah, I'm not and, but I'm I'm a much I'm in a much yeah. deeper, but I'm much more vertical. So I'm in right. a niche of data networking and enterprise yeah. IT. I try That's to I try different. to play with all the mm. new phones, own as many as I can, the new computers, just so I can keep up with stuff people are buying. Yeah. We yeah. have a bunch of doctors on Good Morning America who are on staff, and I was doing a segment with one of them the other day, and I was trying to reach her, and and uh, they said, oh, she's in surgery. That's and I said to myself, wow. would I want a TV doctor operating on me? <laughs> you wake up and you go, oh, I know you. I love you. Just go ahead. Get that yeah. pancreas. I would have a podcasting geek yes. help me with my computer. Yeah. But I don't know about Maybe. I, 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 Maybe. If you have a TV doctor, you actually want them to be in surgery. You don't want a TV doctor who's just making stuff up. That's right. Well, that's true. So you yeah, want that's them true. to be practicing. No, yeah. Did you go to CES while you were out here? No. no. Mike, did you go to CES? No. No, I avoid that like the plague. Becky, you must have gone to CES. Negative. It's only the second one I haven't gone to. Wow. Why yeah. not? No interest. I think, you know, I've heard from a lot of people it just was not a media story. Yeah, I mean, the stories, uh, maybe there's little crumbs. I think you actually had a great story about... Uh, about Zeiss's smart. Yeah, that was technology. last year. That that, oh. that that article was written about a year ago. But the reason You're I kidding? No, the reason I I put it there is because we were talking about Apple working with Carl Zeiss, and people are like, "Gosh, does Carl Zeiss have any?" Yeah, they have amazing technology, and that's with smart why glasses. But that was that was teased at last year's CES. The technology is super solid. And if you read that article, I'm talking about how they're working with some competitor to Google, so that doesn't support or not support. Well, Robert that's, that's, that, that was Apple. the big story from Robert anyway. He says, yeah. and it's not clear, we talked about this a little bit last week. It's not clear where he got this. He says in his Facebook post, a Zeiss employee confirmed the rumors that Apple and Carl Zeiss are working on a pair of augmented reality or mixed reality glasses that may be announced this year, maybe next year. Uh, then later on in the post, he says something about the fact that uh, the people in the booth made faces when he mentioned that as if they were... Laughed nervously. Laughed nervously. Away. I hope that wasn't his source. Well, that's what, that's what he said in the post. That's his source. That's the source? He said to the employees, why are you doing something with Apple? And they laughed nervously. This implies, away. though, a Zeiss employee confirmed implies that he's, a Zeiss employee yeah. said something to him, right. not merely laughed nervously. You think well, it's the nervous... changed from what I saw earlier. Yeah, well, this is the previous post. I don't know. Anyway, it wouldn't be so much of a surprise. And, and, then and said, the other piece that's that, of interest is the, the Zeiss booth was in the augmented reality marketplace, yeah. and yet they had no augmented reality right. products. So that kind of, you know, yeah. confirms something. They're working on something secret. So so you remember that techno remember remember bookstores? Yeah. <laughs> there is a building where they built there was books inside. You know, I was in one yesterday. Oh, wait a minute. That was augmented reality. Yeah, that's a, yes. <laughs> I literally I literally was. We had a company called Occipital who makes the first one I've ever seen for an iPhone, the advisor for the iPhone, and it's augmented reality so you can see things and Touch things. Watch the new screensavers from yesterday. And then uh, our, our co-host, uh, uh, Nathan Oliveras-Giles from the Wall Street Journal, the guy said, okay, now touch that wall. He touched the wall and a hole opened up in that wall and there was a bookstore in there that they had scanned and you could walk mm -hmm. in and go from augmented reality, a real world, to a virtual reality in a bookstore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank God we still have bookstores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and thank goodness Amazon didn't run them out of business and yeah. into virtual reality. So yeah. anyway, so... so in bookstores, they used to sell these flat lenses. It was a flat little credit card size lens to magnify the book. Remember those at the yeah. mm -hmm. That's called lenses. a Fresnel, Fresnel yeah. lens. Yeah. Uh, it's 200 year old technology. That's the technology that the Carl Zeiss technology is based on. Oh. They put it into the glass, and they have 250 patents, supposedly, around smart glasses. 
And so the idea is for augmented reality, mixed reality, they'll be able to build these into ordinary glasses at low cost, and these will be just... You go to the well, optometrist office. That's the key to Fresnel because unlike a regular lens that you have to grind to precise tolerances, these are just, and you've, you've all seen them, Yeah, they're just little wedges of glass that, that's right. that give you a less, I have to say, a less high quality experience. But imagine what's what's possible now with lasers and computer Oh, maybe they could be better. Yeah. Mm. So they've, they've apparently got some really fantastic technology and it's actually a separate company. They spun out a separate company just to do this sort of thing. And, and I'm really excited about this technology in particular, but other efforts in general that will result in smart glasses that look like ordinary glasses. Mm. There are a bunch of companies working on things like that, taking different approaches. But I love this approach because you definitely want visuals. You definitely want a screen. Okay, so let me ask the question, why does this form of augmented reality glasses differ from Google Glass? Why do you see the difference between the bright screen in the upper corner of the lens being so socially different or um, sort of from a, a, a market use case yeah. better than Compared what Google to Google Glass. So, so yeah. I think that the, the, the hot part of the, 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 the company they should be partnering with, and, and I talked about it in the article, is Luxottica, which is the umbrella company for they almost own every all glasses, the glasses company you, in the you know, world. Yeah. Sunglasses Hut. All the, all, the, all the vanity. If you get Gucci glasses, those are Luxottica yeah. glasses. It's an Italian company. And so... I'm pretty sure that within three, four, five years, you'll be able to go to the optometrist office and do you want progressives? Do you want this? Do you want smart? And if it's smart, what's your platform, whatever? It's a checkbox item. And you just get your ordinary glasses and there they are. They're like, they, they have this similar effect as, as um, uh, uh, what do they call it when you have two different lenses Bifocals. inside? Bifocals. Bifocals. It'd be like bifocals. And you'll be able to just get little notifications. You're, so and so is calling you. Mm. Uh, you know, it, and the problem with Google Glasses were twofold. First, they looked really stupid. It was a big boom well, that came out in so front of your. By face. the way, this guy spent fifteen hundred bucks on them and I, wore them around. For I still a long use time. them. I love. Still I love wears them around. Right. Well, I think the thing, the fundamental thing about Google Glasses was they were an ego play. The idea was is that they were meant to look like you're a dick. Well, so I don't think they know, were so meant to. Would I mean, stand out in a crowd. I think, they, I think that and was incidental. Meant to be mobile for, advertising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that, the dick came free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. stupid comes. It was yeah. part of the, Stupid is a stupid. I does. just want to show you <laughs> up here in Fort Bragg. There is, yeah. uh, and there are a number of these. The old lighthouses. That's how they started. Two hundred were Fresnel yeah. lenses. These are made in France. I think it's pronounced probably pronounced Fresnel because I it's it a up. French. It's Fresnel or Fresnel. Yeah, it, there's an S in it. But well, you don't want to say it wrong because you're a TV announcer. I'm just a podcast. But but these lenses are jewels. I went up uh, to Fort Bragg and saw these, and this one's still operational. It's mm -hmm. it's run by the Coast Guard, uh, but it was completely restored, and they're just gorgeous mm -hmm. lenses. And so they could make these giant crystal lenses without yeah. having to yep. and focus the light and where focus the ships the light. are. Right, yeah. and well, it was well, good. There's enough. a few things yeah. in there. One is. So Google Glasses were meant to be an ego play. You put them on your face, that, and they're a statement. I disagree with that. It wasn't meant to be an ego play at all. Absolutely. <laughs> no, right. it no, it I tried to defuse it. It was an no. experiment. Yeah. Uh, the second, so it was now, an experiment. So if that's the case, then why is Snapchat's glasses working so well? Because they look like glasses, right? <coughs> now, the problems with Snapchat glasses is that if you're medically got an optical, medical optical, right. you can't use them. Well, that's why Luxottica should now, get Now, the well, advantage you, of Luxottica is... You're, you're saying you're Snap, now, Snap's glasses are not an ego play? They're limiting, they're putting... They're not... They're they machines. Are. Are and they're trying to make ordinary glasses look like an ego play, but they look like ordinary glasses and they operate like ordinary glasses. They look ridiculous. They have a Three. lens on both sides. They look like yeah. the, the. I don't, I don't disagree with you, but they look days, less the ridiculous. The day I didn't bring my, my Snapchat <laughs> spectacles in, and I couldn't be wearing them now. And How do you feel hit. when you wear them? Yeah. Um, like well, a dick? Not like, <laughs> like a schmuck. <laughs> Uh, like, like a trendy I, I door. Started something. You know, I wore, I wore them to Vegas because I was just curious what the reaction right. would be. And of course, Vegas is camera shy to some degree. In fact, when you get to Vegas now, they even have yeah. ads that say, "Let's keep what happens in right. Vegas here. Let's not mm. share it too much." Uh, but n nobody knew what they were. Yeah. I thought it, so. So only we hipsters and Snapchat folks and tech mm -hmm. people. <laughs> we hipsters. <laughs> Greg opts out. <laughs> Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, I know what they are. Uh, even the waitress at the restaurant, yeah. and I'm, I'm like, like taking pictures of her. She said, "What are you doing? What is? What are those?" And I had explained what mm -hmm. they, what they were to her, and I, I think she was probably somewhat uncomfortable. But. Is yeah. maybe the def the difference that the Google Glass was attempting to be very? Um, it almost looked Euro or intellectual with that's this what form. Greg's saying. And then you know the Snapchats are goofy. That's they just well, so they, the, partly it's also that they cost fifteen hundred bucks. 
So that's kind of it was a it was a little pretentious to wear them because it was a statement. I'm willing to spend fifteen hundred bucks. They were trying to attract cutting edge content creators and, and experimenters and yeah. people like that. It was an experiment. They were upfront about it. Said this is a trial. They said that. Yeah, we're going to yeah. try it. Mm. And then when they because they didn't know what to do with it. They had technology. They didn't know what the application was. It was so new that they. they what they, happened to the rumor that the they were going to keep making this? They are. They are doing they it. Are. They're they're, they're going to work. It's probably going to come out for enterprise. It's going to be a real product. It's not though augmented mm. reality or virtual reality. It's just a screen over your eyebrow. It's it it, it can display. be augmented yeah. reality if no, the application is not even is heads up. Reality. Heads up would be superimposed on what you're looking at. Mm. It's heads up literally where you have to look, look up. up. Yeah. Well, and it, so it's like you have a little monitor right here. For manufacturing, it'll be augmented reality. People will be using machines and the instructions and things. See, will that be, I'm excited yeah. about. I think augmented mm. reality, where it is superimposed, it is a heads-up display. Yeah. There are, there are companies out there today using, using Google Glass for health and telemedicine. Right. Yeah. And it's so like a reference a manual that's there. That's where no, I fundamentally more... disagree with what you're saying, Greg, yeah. that this is going to be a build, <laughs> an add-on to your specs. Like, do you mm -hmm. want polarized? Do you want um, you know sunglasses that go with it with that prescription? Do you want smart? I'm still not... Not seeing a regular human use case. Oh, the, the, I am. The, it's really? notifications. No. So, so here, there's no camera. Okay. There's no camera. That's what? the thing. There's no camera. Yeah. What? That's real. I walk around and I don't know who I'm looking at. I don't know. I know I worked with you. I can't remember your name. It pops up your name. Some seminal. That some, doesn't exist. Mm. You I just called me Greg. If you'd had these, <laughs> you'd have said Mike. Did I? I think it exists. <laughs> I think it's completely doable. So they've turned off. As far as this, Google has that capability. Yeah, but Google just turned it off because of the creep factor, and that's the right. biggest but problem, in my opinion, with Google Glass. Exactly, it's is a the creep factor. Yes, yeah. if, without a camera, it's just you have. It's prescience. informational. So if you think about we're entering, entering this world of artificial intelligence virtual assistants, where you can have a really actually smart and useful Siri, Cortana, etc. I'm not supposed to say those words. <laughs> uh, and um, and and imagine Just don't when say Alexa. Oh, <laughs> don't say that. So imagine when you have real pre pre uh, preemptive. Uh, you're walking down the street and says, "Hey, you you should be interested in this. I know that you care about this sort of thing." And just. A little subtle notification that other people mm. can't see, and you're normal. Meanwhile, you're wearing ordinary glasses. I think yeah. that's really what people. I, I would my, love that. Wow, I would I love my my visualization how is how much I disagree with that. Uh, go ahead. Every, most people here have an Apple Watch. So if you, my visualization is, if you take the Apple Watch and put it on the inside of the glasses as a. Yeah. As an as on something yeah. that you can see as you're moving around instead of having to wristwatch it, yeah. then that's loosely where I see the progression going is well, down that direction. And that's yeah. why I think it's very credible that the Scoble story that Apple might be interested in doing this. I don't know if they're doing it with but Zeiss, whatever. They're doing it with all of them. That's the what I would guess. Big company is talking to everybody yeah, and, who makes components for this type of stuff. They're talking to all of them all the time. And, and yeah, so it's meaningless to say they're doing it because we, of course, they're they are. talking to Luxottica. That's a given. They're talking. Right. They're going to have meetings all However, over the place. Nothing's going to come of ninety nine. Tim Cook has said now at least twice we're yeah. very it, like meaningfully like we're very interested in AR. Duh. That's well, but I think that that's him putting a little flag in the sand saying you sure. know we want to claim this and people are looking at apple saying look you got nothing you got no vr you, yep. you know siri is way lagging way behind everybody else's product uh w you know what are you doing besides coming out with watch bands and i think this is tim mm -hmm. saying no no we're doing something we are just as typical apple we're not going to tell you anything till we yep. have something and i would i think it's very credible because of what you said that yep. this would fit into their line by the way somebody's pointed out uh, i think we talked about on MacBreak weekly the airpods could have a similar augmented. Well, see, but this is this is another thing. It, it, Apple would love for people to be able to wear AirPods every waking moment, all the time. But you can't. The batteries don't last long enough. Right. They're too weird looking. Yeah. But glasses through bone conduction can give you audio. Right. In a okay. device yeah. that only has to be charged okay. once a week. Yes. And since you've already got this smarts and the intelligence and the battery and all that stuff in the glasses, people are going to want a little visual cue to mm -hmm. go with the audio. But think about the production challenges here. Glasses have to be fitted to every single person. You can't produce one product. They already are. Make. That's that's the, the, it's, it exists already. The the whole system Couldn't of measuring you have the eyes. Something and, that goes in the frame that is. Yes, you could, but now you've got you've now got to produce an outlet which can customize for every human head. Do you want round frames? Do you want square frames? Do you well, want clear? Do you've got women's? You've got men's? You've got children. That's how it works already. It does that. It's uh, just a question of having something they can. And Apple add. is not about customization. Yeah. Apple is about producing one oh, yeah. Apple Watch that Apple, everybody gets and we shove it down your throat. Apple's not going to be the company that does Apple's not going to be the company that does this. You have AirPods. There's no earpod. There's no ability to have a soft 
you know, or over ear. You can't have headphones. No, you can't have are earphones. Just AirPods are. What they are. This yeah. is the only choice you get, yeah, and suck Apple. it if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, <clears throat> Apple is not about customization. It is about personalization of the experience in software. It is not about customization of the hardware. So, for Apple to do glasses would require a fundamental shift in its corporate operations, and that is not something Unless it's likely to achieve. They make clip-ons. Well. This is where this, these Luxottica comes in because Johnny, those I glasses are actually grave. manufactured in regional locations. So when you go to the, to the optometrist and you get your glasses made, they're actually made in local regional. The machines are fully robotic and your order goes off into an area usually within about 500 miles of where your optometrist is. Mm -hmm. And they're manufactured on the spot and then shipped to your location, popped into the lenses, blah, blah, blah. And so in theory, this Fresnel effect could be something that could be, you know, a base... Uh, lens is produced in a factory overseas, shipped to their local location, and then it's actually customized for the person. It's popped into the frame that mm -hmm. you choose, and maybe the frame's got switchable components inside. Well, it. there you go. You just Perhaps. answered your own. But I think that that's a decade away. Oh, How many? decade away. Easily. The, no. the, the, the custom, the material science that you need to carry a battery in here. Isn't there also well, a case to be made that Apple's just going to scattershot? do everything they can with everyone on every technology to try and figure out what's, what they can get uh, into. I do think they're going to have to support it from a software on. thing. I mean, they, if people start switching to Android so they can have the new smart glasses from their optometrist, then they will have to do something. Right. I think that they, they, there's something, I'm sure they're looking at it and considering it and wondering about it. You talked about batteries. I talked to a startup in San Francisco, a tiny startup called View, and they're getting around all these issues. They have good audio through bone conduction, they have batteries on both sides, or no, they have battery on one side, the electronics on the other side, and they're using lights and blinking lights and things off in the corner that alert you and you can customize it. Green means your wife is calling, that sort of thing. And, you know, their, their, their batteries last for a week and so on. They're not projecting a screen, but you can easily see how notifications with screen, you know, vi a visual element could be optimized and customized to give you at least a couple of days of battery life in today, using today's battery technology. And again, mm -hmm. somebody's going to figure this out. Apple has a big advantage. They have a rabid fan base that's willing to spend a lot of money. I don't think this Apple Watch would go anywhere if it had been from Samsung. Uh, in fact, it hasn't from Samsung. <laughs> so, so, but but Apple could make a, a fairly expensive product that they could get early adopters. What I find interesting, I don't think Apple will own this space ever. But I think Apple wants to be in this space. Apple doesn't do partnerships well. So what no. I'm trying to say is that to, to mm -hmm. perhaps trying to say indirectly is Apple needs to partner with other people to deliver those uh, products. And that or, buy, or, or buy them. Carl Zeiss. Yeah, and that ain't going to happen. They Carl, buy Carl Zeiss, Zeiss is only one optical supplier, one right. of about 10, right? right. And not right. even the biggest. Um, so, and you've got They're the ones with 250 pounds. I don't, actually, the I don't though. see these as, as roadblocks. But I do think that mm -hmm. Apple's a little bit behind in so many of the other technologies that are going to be required to make this thing succeed. Yeah. And what we are seeing a convergence. We're seeing amazing uh, voice is clearly mm -hmm. uh, one of the next big things. I, I would argue that, that uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, voice, and augmented reality are kind of the next big three things. Yep. Which is interesting because they've been here for coming as the next big thing for over a decade. Well, that, but that AI is your decade is question. Yep. We are making this progress, yes, and, and, and we, we are in the, we're in the hockey stick, I think. We're yeah. starting to get Voice in the hockey Voice is at the stick. tipping point. Yeah. For sure. I don't buy it with AR and VR. I see VR in gaming. I see AR in VR industry. I'm not excited about. I really think it's AR. A VR only in it, to the mm -hmm. extent that it's in, used in conjunction with AR. There'll be mm -hmm. niche use cases. Yeah. And people well, run around going, great. oh, but it works for... Yeah, gaming's you know, great. Yeah. But I don't think you want to walk around town with a VR. I can't help on. being a consumer reporter and thinking of these through that lens, right. no pun intended. And right. that's where I see... But, but look, at, look at how unexpected the... the a word echo. Well, I shouldn't say. I don't want to do a command. The echo I don't want to surprised us, but it worked. It worked, because, and for consumers, it worked. Well, and this is it's, I, a, it's. We don't know the sales, well, and it's. I do. But apply those who have an uh, an Amazon voice controlled device in their home have been shown to well have ten percent higher purchases from of Amazon. Course. Well done. I do. I just bought batteries <laughs> that way. I just yeah. bought batteries, and I do that all the time. It's frictionless. But, so I, yeah. I, one of my favorite yeah. danger events of the year and, and I'm actually moderating an, an, uh, uh, a series of panels and it's a week after next at the Virtual Assistant Summit in San Francisco. Oh, how fun. And this is for the people who are the movers and shakers who are actually yeah. building this stuff. Awesome. All the heavy hitters are there. It's an yeah. amazing conference and the progress you see year after year is just phenomenal. The, art, the application of artificial intelligence. Last year, a, a, a tiny little woman from Google got up on stage and told us how 
Smart Reply works in Inbox and in and and in Allo. Is she going to be reply? in the Google Home? How tiny <laughs> she's going to be in there. And she <laughs> talked for like a half an hour about how the the it's AI behind that it is mind, mind blowing. blowing. You know, I was just to we get you say. Hey, I was talking okay, about thanks. the radio show. Somebody said, "Well, I want to uh, tag all my photos and." Is there a software that will do that? Mm -hmm. I said, just upload it to Google. Yeah. Google's amazing. You right. can, I mean, it's one thing to say, okay, give me pictures of Paris. That's easy to right. do. You've got GPS, you've got landmarks. But but the, try it with dogs. It yeah. will find not only, will find any breed of dog. Now, that's, I think, a very big challenge for any intelligence mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, a, a Doberman Pinscher doesn't look anything mm -hmm. like a, a Shih Tzu. Mm -hmm. And yet, it knows that both are dogs. That's an amazing step forward in artificial intelligence or machine it, learning it or whatever. It detects like. different types of food. You can say, you know, show me burgers, show me pizza, show That's me this. That's hard to do. It's unbelievable. It's so unbelievable. Uh, I feel like huge progress is being made. It is not being made in Apple as far as I can tell. You never know because Apple's a black box. Well, well, Apple's, Apple's actually Apple's got amazing is, AI too. Uh, Apple's got it. amazing AI, but it doesn't have the data pool. And well, this and, is the, the thing about I Alexa you, is Amazon has been seeding the, the point of the Echo is to seed it out there to get collecting data. It was never about selling products. It was about collecting data well, to build an AI. I would AI. argue it's both. Why not? It Why doesn't not? have to be one, no, right? But it's not explicitly just... Most people have too much of a narrow focus no, on it's, it it's adds a, to it's sales. A, it's a wonderful yeah. synergy because yeah. we're making 10% more on these guys and they're giving us data. Yeah. But so Google's every time done somebody this historically. Google's command. always done this. I guarantee you that's why Google Photos is free and they're encouraging you to upload exactly. pictures. They're building a database yeah. of machine learning. Uh, it's why Google... Remember Google 411? They even said that we're collecting voice samples. It's yep. been very that's helpful. That's why there's no artificial intelligence startups below a billion dollars right because you have to have the data and the that only way you can have the data me, is to the tap way. into we so have been in, in in the in this industry for the last few decades we've been in a position where somebody could start something in a garage and and really yes. build a business you, we are rapidly getting to the point where you can't be a facebook you couldn't be a google mm -hmm. you can't be a machine intelligence mm -hmm. company because it requires too much to get started. We're kind of gone yes. back to that We're old day. You couldn't be a steel company giving unless you... away email just yeah. to get a data lake. Just to get the data. Just to get the data yeah. lake. For a while, uh, academics were leaving the university and forming little startups for AI and stuff like that. But all the Silicon Valley companies have bought them up, especially... That's all you can hope DeepMind, for. Google bought DeepMind, which is amazing. The reason that those guys got bought up was because they can't monetize because they right. don't have enough data to artificial Absolutely. intelligence eyes. But there's a... <laughs> I just made that up. One, one, of, the, one of the weirdest <laughs> problems... That sounded though. good to me. I believe you. <laughs> You said it with authority. Yeah. That's what's important. That's the important yeah. thing. It didn't help us with the bomb. Always language. certain, sometimes right. Yeah. That's my major yeah. Did you see the story that DeepMind, you know, the DeepMind yeah. won the Go champion yes. uh, ship. Yep. But what DeepMind, what Google has been doing without announcement is unleashing DeepMind mm -hmm. against real players uh, all over the world, particularly in China and Japan where Go is played. Um and and I guess people didn't know that they were playing Deep Mind. They right. thought they were playing a real Go master. It has now beaten the fifty top Go players oh. in just complete dominance. So you could say when it beat Lee Sedol, who is a great player, uh, well, but that was one guy. It was tuned to beat his style, etc. Uh, Deep Mind and Alpha Go are getting better and better. And this is the thing that people, I, in my opinion. Google's huge advantage and the yeah. thing that should scare people because yeah. mm -hmm. they are I think they are farther ahead than we maybe well, even Well this is a product of machine learning. So it's this isn't something they've programmed it to it do. They program it to learn how to play mm -hmm. Go and every time it beats one of these masters it gets better and it's also the the Go masters are saying it's transforming the game. They it's playing in a way that is that no humans have ever thought to play. Oh, and it's cool. sort of opening their eyes to new so at ideas. So at the technology level, you're right. So let me flip this back into the other space is the trouble that Google has is monetizing this. Apple takes whatever it's got and monetizes it like nobody else does yep. and has this massive money lake to get to dig it out of any hole. Google's got all these great technologies, but they struggle to monetize right. them. And, and in fact, of late, uh, Ruth Porat, their new CFO, has been starting to cut off yes. uh, alphabet projects mm -hmm. yeah. and force others to lay off people uh, because there, it doesn't seem like Google's running out of money. No, but I mean, there, but there is a belt the tightening going so Well, there always has the to be. They have to prune. It's rationalization. They have to rationalize and focus. Yeah. more wood behind less arrows. Yeah, <laughs> and but mm -hmm. so you can. You're right. I think Google does have better technology, but it doesn't have a process for monetizing that technology, and that's what Google needs to work on. In it's the like next Xerox Park. Yes, where they invented. Where there was a great book. Xerox invented the yeah. world and lost mm -hmm. anyway because. Mm -hmm. They didn't Apple uh, uh, Apple monetize. Look at Google Cars. Uh, yeah. Google was way ahead of well, everybody else, and now all of a sudden, way Ford more. Now they're way more ahead of everybody else. <laughs> oh. oh.
Uh, rename. All right. Let's uh, actually. I do want to talk about autonomous vehicles because that was another big story. It's going on right now at the Detroit Auto Show. Mm -hmm. I found that the news from there more interesting than CES. Maybe you know? there was definitely a lot more. Uh, talk. Do you love that new Volkswagen? Uh, <laughs> Van, the throwback. The, yeah, the throwback van. I, I, it's a concept. I think. I don't think it's real. It's but. yet another throwback van from VW that will never see the market. <laughs> it is always good to go back to the past. Yes, yes. Especially it, if the present has this whole thing with the, the you people know, don't getting think in about trouble the and software. the fines, and we don't want to mention and the diesel, and <laughs> the diesel, and that's all of that stuff. We're gonna take a break. Hey, good panel today. Greg Farrow is here from the Packet Pushers Network, PacketPushers.net. Uh, always good to have you Thank here. Thank you. We have uh, Becky Worley from GMA, my dear friend from Tech TV. I love days. how you refrained from using old. <laughs> you know, I started, didn't I? But you, I stopped. you were good. I, 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 I sensed the hesitation. You know, friend. <laughs> and uh, Mike Elgin, who is old. His old friend. Yeah, he's my old friend. Uh, always great to have all of you here. Our show today, we got a new sponsor brought to you by SeatGeek. I love SeatGeek because uh, you get the best deal on sports, concert, and theater tickets online. Uh, it's what's great is, uh, and we've been doing this a lot lately. Is we say, well, who do we want to see? We go to SeatGeek and we find seats. And, and sometimes it, we've done this. We, it's in Denver, the best seats. So we'll go to Denver. Hey, we got a day trip to Denver. SeatGeek is different. They come came along, created an amazing app, an amazing website that makes it easier than ever to buy and sell. By the way, we should add that sell tickets. It does price comparisons for you, so you know exactly. It searches multiple ticket sites, so you know exactly what the best deal is. They do all the work. You save the time and the money. Every ticket on SeatGeek is given a grade based on value. So you can see the underpriced seats. Find the best deals that fit your budget. It's a great way to shop. Now, we're going to get you a $20 rebate on your first SeatGeek purchase. So, hey, this one's on me. Go to SeatGeek and download the app. All right. Actually, best thing probably to go to the uh, app store of your of your phone and search for SeatGeek, S-E-A-T-G-E-E-K. Go to the settings tab, add a promo code, and use the promo code TWIT. You're going to get 20 bucks after you've made your first ticket purchase. Download the SeatGeek app, enter the promo code TWIT today for 20 bucks off. They've got Hamilton tickets. <gasps> Ooh. SeatGeek, get the app on your phone, and then add the promo code TWIT for $20 back on your first purchase. Seat Geek, made for geeks with seats. My nine year old daughter wants to go to Hamilton so badly. Nine years old? Oh, yeah. It's awesome. big. It's like the. What was the one that. Was there one that Abby was into when she was at like one Broadway show that they were into? Cats. Maybe, or Wicked. <laughs> Wicked was big. Yeah. yeah. It's Hamilton for the kids now. Huh. How she can recite nine songs top to bottom. Yeah. She just got uh, retainers. So now she's working on doing the whole entire thing. I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm not throwing away my shot. She really appreciate this segment. She will. <laughs> no, that's great. It's, it's no, outstanding it's coming to for San her articulation. Francisco. Are you going to get tickets? You can get them. Sure I was Steve. flying when the auction happened. It's already over? Oh, yeah. I put my, I went in. I was like 90,000. You need seat geek. And <laughs> okay. it, it landed and I, I had an to shut down my computer. I got you can't refuse. I got four tickets. <gasps> Lisa and I will take you and your daughter. How about that? <gasps> oh my God. Okay. Okay. Done. <laughs> Deal. Wow. Uh, and we have to tell all the other people we've invited uh, their camp. Holy <laughs> cow. Wow. Bad that luck was, to them. Uh, you wow. know, the guy who's going to do it in San Francisco is the guy who's doing it in Chicago. They got and, and it's the King George from Broadway, so it's going to be fun. Oh. That, and this, I can sing it along with your daughter because I have memorized oh, it. King George's song is my favorite yes, one yes. from the whole, yes. You'll be back. <laughs> Wait and see. Don't you remember? You belong to me. And kill all your friends and family. That's the best line. <laughs> Just remind you of my love. Da 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 da. I think we've going. lost them. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've lost them. Theater geeks. Da, da, I mean, it's not theater that geeks. Are the worst. Which is worse, sports ball, politics, or theater? Uh, I just decided theater. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> <laughs> This is worse. I'm losing it over here. Can't wait for the sequel. <laughs> Trump. Uh, uh, the music. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Consumer Reports has changed their mind. Uh, you remember Consumer Reports at first, for the first time in, in me me living memory, I think, said don't buy the new MacBook Pro because the battery life is wildly inconsistent. But anybody who's ever tested battery life or anything on a computer should have, Consumer Reports really blew it because they should have noted, for instance, they got all, you know, everything from two hours to 18 hours in their tests. Then they did it with Chrome, and it was great. At that point, red they flag. should say, yeah, red flag. Oh, something's wrong here. Maybe we shouldn't say anything yet. 
And and I, I don't know if this is true or not. We were talking about this on, uh, I think it was Mac Break Weekly. And I, and I think it was Alex Lindsay who said, this is why I no longer trust Consumer Reports. They become linked. When was Consumer mm -hmm. Reports ever trustworthy when it came to technology? I think they're they great never for other products. Never. Right. Especially big technology but, like but laptops. But this, this the, his contention was, and I can't disagree with him, they went... So they went to press prematurely to get look. Uh, there's hits. a lot of this methodology that I'm confused by. First of all, a couple things you should know: Consumer Reports has never been sued, never been what? never been successfully sued. Wow! For a review, they told me this themselves. Number two, what confuses me about the methodology here is that when I do a test or anything for ABC, our lawyers and we have a negative result. Our lawyers insist that we go to the company talk to them about it, right. and work through any concerns they may have, lest we get sued. You don't surprise them with the article in print. No, you get Is a comment. Is that what happened? They didn't yeah. talk to Apple? I don't know I don't if that's... I don't think it was in print, but it was online. I don't yeah. know if they got a comment or what have you, but you would think that Apple would say, whoa, what did you do? Let's walk well, through that's this. Well, exactly I, I actually did. imagine after, that they don't. After I they imagine got... Apple just went, uh -huh. No, well, they did. No, Apple immediately responded. So. It was yeah. a big deal. After the article. After the, after after the article. Yeah. And, and you're right. They may have gone to Apple, Apple and said, we don't care. And, and Apple just went, uh, we'll get back to you in, in yeah. a month. Which is yeah. very Apple. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. So yeah. it turns out that Consumer Reports, and I don't think this is an unreasonable methodology, but they use Safari. They say, we're not going to use a third-party browser to test because we want to use what comes on the platform. That's reasonable. But they did go into the developer options, and they turned off caching in Safari reasonably because this test loads pages mm -hmm. over and over again yeah. with Wi-Fi. So it's testing Wi-Fi page loads. It's a, it's a probably fairly decent test. It's not real world, but it's mm -hmm. close enough. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out when you disable caching in Safari, a bug surfaces, a, right. a rare, n never seen bug. And that's what happened. According right. to Apple, Apple fixed the bug, Consumer Reports retested and got consistently high 18 hour battery life and now recommends the Mac. So how long has Pros. this been running? What been running? This 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 Ferrari. Uh, four weeks. Four weeks? Yeah, five, no, only I think it was a week. A yeah, couple yeah, of week. weeks. No, longer than a week. No, cuz it wasn't on the show last week and they said Janu 5 days ago they uh, Apple came back with a comment um, about it. So it was December, it was right after Christmas that they So it's the 15th today Apple released a patch on January the 9th that yep. fixed the issue. Yeah. Consumer Reports fit, re evaluated the laptops in December. So they announced it, I think, before Christmas. Oh, okay. So it's yeah, taken right, Apple right before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. taken Apple roughly a month to come up with a response. So there's there, so in terms of a damage damage control, nobody that's looks not good, good in any of this. Apple, no. first of all, first and foremost, Apple came out with a, a laptop that is not a worthy successor to their previous Mac after oh. all this time. Mm. And, and I, by the way, ways. I would say my experience, completely anecdotal experience with my MacBook Pro, is that the and and Lisa as well is highly inconsistent totally. battery life. Mm. So the initial Consumer Reports measurements, in fact, despite the errors, match your actual match experience. my actual back, experience. Back in the 90s, I was the editor of Windows Magazine. And I don't turn we off developed the all kinds right. of battery tests. And you don't have a one-dimensional test using one application. Right. You you go after graphics. You go after this. You go after mm -hmm. data. You go after you know, oh you 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 burn you hit that battery with all kinds of different things. You don't just try one brow one test in one browser. And so everything about this is flawed from both Apple's perspective and Consumer Reports. But the biggest thing to me is you it has to pass a test of reasonableness. When they got really horrible battery results from Apple that were not being broadly reported in the press, they should have said, hey, wait a minute, there's something wrong here, let's figure it out. Not, oh, we don't recommend this product. I saw, I thought it was really irresponsible of Consumer Reports. Yeah, I, well, I'm with you. I think this MacBook is a dud, and we just need yeah. to, it's not, people should avoid it if possible. Right. Now, I understand the, that- The waters know, are very much muddied now, though, yes, because yes. Consumer Reports is now recommending it and saying, yeah. oh, no, the battery life's great, <laughs> which isn't right either. No. And p too many people like you are giving us apocryphal comments saying, <clears throat> I'm getting inconsistent results and Apple's solution was It's not was apocryphal. To, it's true. Yeah. It's anecdotal, though. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It, so many people are throwing out comments here and there. and I see them all know, over. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're going like, oh, whatever. What's going so, on? And whereas previous laptops it, have been really bang on the money. Battery life is hard to test, though, right? Yes. Because everybody uses it differently. I don't... In fact, the fact that I don't... You know, I used the MacBook Pro when it first <laughs> came out, maybe in the <laughs> first week... I used it on a MacBook, MacBook Weekly without a plug, and it died after two hours. Mm. I didn't freak out because there's all sorts of reasons you yep. could have crappy mm -hmm. battery mm -hmm. life, and then, and and then the next day it was Google six Chrome, hours. For example, mm -hmm. yeah, Chrome, is, <laughs> right. Chrome apparently about 15 percent better, higher battery usage. Yeah. It could have been that, and I was using Chrome. It could have been it was mm. brand new, so it was still spotlight indexing. There's all sorts of things, 
and I've just kind of lived with it. But consumers, I mean, we, we do want a number from the company that is mm -hmm. at least apples to apples so that mm. we know that, well, if it's going to be more than last time, yep. I know what I got in the last one. It should be relevant relatively right. but it has, there has to be a connection with reality we all have multiple devices we all have a sense we walk around with the sense of oh my laptop gets really great battery life my phone not so much and like we you know after using it a while you get a sense whether battery life is a problem or you're kind of thrilled with battery right. life yep. and so the tests have to reflect that so it has to be very very broadly done you have to be very careful about yep. how you do it and it you always have to tweak it over time so that the experience of using and owning this device matches the general the sense flip, you gave. But the, Apple the cited result. that this was one specific flaw yeah. in Safari and that they had turned it off, um, that Consumer Reports had turned this feature off, right. and they do this with all their testing. Right. So it was consistent. Yep. Why well, isn't Apple doing the tests that Consumer Reports are doing? Because they're public. And Apple tried because to downplay HPE the, the bug saying it's an obscure usage model. I don't think that's that obscure. Right. To turn off caching, I don't think that's... That's not obscure. And more importantly, if you go and talk to HPE or Dell about how they test their consumer laptops, guess what they do? Right. They go and run the Consumer Reports test to make sure it's valid. Right. So I think a few things here. One, Apple isn't actually doing its basic due diligence and saying this is going to be tested by consumer reports why don't we do this right failure second their reaction was not to actually do anything about it and just throw up the walls and pretend that it's not a problem and blame consumer reports third consumer reports should have said yes look we're getting inconsistent results there could be a they shouldn't have been so didactic and, and locked into a position and said well you know blah 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 mm -hmm. and finally why did apple take so long to fix what is a fairly full problem that's a that bug should have been really easy for them to find yeah so who's at fault both both yeah. Okay, so Consumer Reports went to press too early with this, probably. There, there were red flags when you read their press release. You went, wait a minute, whoa, Chrome <laughs> yeah. had great battery life, but Safari didn't? Okay, hold on here. Right. There is a huge level of Apple hubris that's perceived in them not getting back to them and having enough dialogue. Apple to hubris? Get back Come on. That's every time, right? That's nonstop. Yep. Well, what's interesting is that I, I won't name our news organizations, but I know that Apple is starting to mandate that each news organization has one point of contact. Yeah. Because they feel inundated. They feel... Um, that there are I too would, many requests I would frankly love in. a point of contact. <laughs> 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 One's better than none. A maximum of one, Leo. <laughs> so so at, at, a, at a certain practical point of view, that's incredibly childish approach. Yeah. So the way that Apple is running their marketing is they're running a very small marketing team. Mm -hmm. Instead of spreading out the team and having enough people to cope with the inbound requests and hiring in enough people, they're saying, no, what we'll you do... You deal with it. You deal with it. Right, hold the media. It's so, it's so like, interesting how close Apple, how closely Apple's run to the Trump transition. There is, <laughs> and even the press conference where they had the people in the front row applauding. That's what Apple does. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's really interesting yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's everything is great, huge, that's superlative. Where, that's where Trump learned it from oh, watching yeah. Apple announce. Well, yeah. Apple is really good at marketing, right? Yeah. Um, but well, I think the, that arrogance in the long run hurts you a little bit. I think it's starting to catch up. Like the the you're talking about neurolinguistic programming. So Apple is a straight out neurolinguistic programming in every single one of their decks. Explain that. So neurolinguistic programming is when you use keywords to trigger association. So when you use the word "it's fantastic," and you repeat the word "it's fantastic." And then you repeat the word, it's so amazing, and it's fantastic. Which Apple does. If you do a cut down of their speeches, yes. it's like boom, 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 so boom, So by boom. just continually repeating and reinforcing the same word, you're making sure that the customer or the person in the audience is actually being programmed to walk away with the perception of fantastic. And so to learn more about this, you need to read Scott Adams' blog. He's the creator yeah. of Dilbert. And he, he goes, he's been going on and on about this for a yes. year or two. The funny he's, thing he's is your them, conscious yeah. mind recognizes how stupid it is. Yes. But it still works. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, there's several examples of this. One of the ways is uh, if you put th uh, three colored objects in front of somebody and you want them to pick a single color, what you do is just use rhyming words with the color mm -hmm. and you know, they'll actually be triggered <laughs> yep. to a significant, statistically significant degree to pick the color that you want them to pick. Wow. Right? And it's a standard con trick. But uh, so Apple's using these types of tricks in its marketing. I think it wears out after a while. Yeah. You know, in the same way that, you know, when a politician comes into power, you see them, you know, use a certain set of media tricks and all of a sudden people go, like when Obama came to power, he was very much like, you know, we're going to be... Le and then all of a sudden he started to move into a centrist position because he wasn't able to control the message, he wasn't able to bring, the, you know, the right wing along with him, blah, blah, blah. So you, you end up... These media tricks wear out and I think Apple's media position is starting to struggle. It's certainly not able to cope like it used to be. Which, uh, would, and Scott the general Adams, exodus of staff is an issue. Scott Adams right. calls it the moist robot hypothesis. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we, are, we are moist robots. In other words, yeah. we're biological, but we're also 
free will is an illusion mm -hmm. and we can be programmed once you understand our human yeah, user exactly. and, and I, it's, it's I think goes it goes back to post truth which is we want emotion instead of information yeah. but from a technology yeah. pr perspective i think it has to be credit has to be given to steve jobs who i don't know how he arrived at it but he was the genius and master at this whole idea every time he gave an interview or or announced a product you walked away with something in your head that he wanted to put in your head one of the most uh, casual examples of this is when he went before the Cupertino City Council and said, we'd like to build a new headquarters. Looks like a spaceship. Mm -hmm. And since that moment, we've all called it the Spaceship Campus. He yeah. planted this yeah. wonderful, fun idea around his building, and he just did it like it's a bodily just another function. Building. He was so good it's at it. It's just another building, right? Yeah. It just yeah. happens to be a bit fun. There's actually a building exactly like it in Oxford in England. It's actually a linear accelerator. It actually uh, use it for an optical light source as a research. Well, it's a, uh, it's a lot like the GCHQ or one of the. Uh, no, GCHQ Pentagon doesn't look anything like okay. that. Okay. Um, there, there's live, a round I building. In, I live in the town where GCHQ is. I promise you, it doesn't look anything like yeah. Apple's. Not at all. Um, but if you go to Oxford in the Rutherford Appleton Research mm -hmm. Laboratory, you'll actually find the the laser light source. It, it is a mm -hmm. straight out, hundred percent Apple copied that building as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. I think that there's a, a parallel between Steve Jobs and Trump in their communication styles. Mm. They kind of look Wrong. angry. Wrong. <laughs> they Just look kidding. angry, but yeah. say positive things yeah. often. Mm. Um, and that, that, you know, when Trump's got his yeah. brow Time furrowed, the and then he says, it was amazing, it was terrific. You know, it's yep. really powerful when an mm. angry person says positive things. Yep. I always got You're that grateful. vibe from, yeah, I got that vibe <laughs> from Steve Jobs that he was sort of, you know, he was angry down. You. Yes, well, <laughs> that was your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's constantly angry, but he's angry at you. Well, he had, a, he had an Jobs, intensity. Trump doesn't smile. At least Jobs smiled. Right, but he has an intensity. He, a scary, when a scary person is being nice, Yeah, he, you're powerful. more receptive. Yeah, exactly. You know what scares me a little bit is the notion that Steve Jobs and others might be consciously using these uh, techniques of persuasion. Mm. It, it, it bothers me a little bit. I mean... Uh, I'm aware of NLP. I've been aware of it my almost my whole life, but I consciously choose, to, at least attempt to not use it yes. because I feel it's manipulative. And it bothers me that people that I respect, like Steve Jobs, would, I feel like the word is stoop to mm. using these kinds but of things. But when you're successful with a style of communications, you're, that's a reinforcement to continue using those styles of communication. Yeah. So if those successes jibe right. with your internal value structure, it doesn't matter. And both Trump and Jobs persuade by reframing the conversation. Uh, you'd say, you know, Steve Jobs, why are you killing Flash? Why are you doing this to Flash? It's unfair to your partner, Adobe, blah, blah, blah. He would say, you know, we have limited resources and we need to put all of our resources behind technologies that we feel have a future. So we're looking at the future and does Flash have a future or does HTML5 have a future? And so pretty soon you're you, you've hmm. seen it from his per perspective. It's well, not about he doesn't, his so relationship to another what, they, what both I, of them never do is they never defend their position. Right. They always ah. attack the next position. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And so you, you, instead of defending and saying, look, Flash is a battery hog and it mm. makes my iPhone run you for don't half do a day. That. You don't do that. You don't defend your position. You attack the next position and say, I'm going over there while right. you're over here futzing around pretending and talking right. about mm -hmm. and And really it comes down to what I call the don't tell me what you did for me yesterday. Tell me what you're going to do for me tomorrow. I don't want to hear about today's problems. I don't want to hear that. about yesterday's problems. I think problems. that that's not that's necessarily manipulative or bad. Unfortunately, that catches up with you because if you don't solve today's problems ah, or you don't manage you're holding today's it problem, wrong. Yeah. 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 You end then, up holding a bag full of promises. Yes. Yeah. And eventually the promises turn into hot air and start like the current MacBook Pro, right? Yeah. Clearly not an astonishing advance, even though they got up on stage mm -hmm. and said, this is the best. Are you blaming MacBook. Steve Jobs for the current MacBook <laughs> no, Pro? No, I'm saying they got up on stage and said, it's the best MacBook we've ever made. Right. It's got this amazing touch right. bar. You couldn't live up to that. I, I wouldn't amazing. blame the absence of Steve Jobs for the MacBook Pro. I think that if, you know, and people throw this out all the time and it's probably unfair, but I think that if Steve Jobs were alive today, that wouldn't have shipped. It shouldn't have been on stage. It should have no. been just a point release. It should have bumped mm. without an announcement. And the touch bar. They couldn't because of the touch bar. That's a that's a major bar product. Is, I don't think the, the touch bar would have made it into the product of Steve no, Jobs. No, he would have waited until the yeah. next big, until the next until the entire of bottom of the of the along. clamshell was 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 touch screen. Yes, that or would have been Steve Jobs. The By the way, is that, the is rumor is that's the next thing. I be hope all it is. OLED, uh, uh, screens. And who's doing that? A Toshiba or somebody is making a laptop. The one laptop for a child concept 
before it went away, that was the concept. You had screens on both sides. You could have it flat and be yeah. a tablet. You could have it booked. I like could, that. It's great. It's a great idea. People yeah. are resistant to non-mechanical mm. keyboards. Manufacturing but. OLEDs at scale is an enormous challenge. And yeah. whether that'll ever happen or not. But, yeah. you know, the, 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 not all of the problems in the MacBook Pro are Apple's making. They're Intel CPUs. The Intel production of CPUs mm -hmm. has been problematic. Intel's there. fumbled considerably. In fact, I think Intel it, it has lost the game. I think ARM is is about to take over. What do you think? Now, this is really up your alley. So I think we're seeing things like, you know, we last time I was on the show, we talked about uh, the new types of RAM, the permanent RAM, the SD RAM. And the challenges that Intel's now got is that those permanent RAM options aren't able to ser be serviced for, at speed by the CPU. Right. So the bus between the CPU and the memory isn't fast enough to take advantage of this right. NVRAM capability. And uh, they've started producing it and getting it out there, but it's only seeing like a 10 times performance improvement. So instead of these things being a thousand times faster, which like, it would be, which it should be, the bus is fast enough. But the NVMe interface has to run over electronics, and it's just too right. slow. And we were supposed to be seeing silicon photonics by now. So this idea that a really, yeah, uh, we, the theory was a decade ago instead of electrons. Yes. Yeah, so instead of the chip talking to the graphics chip or the chip talking to the DRAM, shouldn't be an electrical signal propagating down a copper trace. Because um, the way that electricity, I'm going to try for a metaphor here and say, just stretch it ever so slightly, but if you know in a pipe and you've got water running down the pipe, the water actually sticks to the side of the pipe. Right. So the pipe prevents the water from flowing properly. Right. And when you take the pressure off, the water keeps flowing because it's got momentum. Well, electric current is roughly the same. And so there's only so fast you can drive the electric current. There's only so fast you can trigger the edges so, and create signals. And it's actually incredibly slow. It's like half the speed of light as a result, and you can only get so many clock cycles. We need to be into optical communications between CPU to memory, CPU to storage, CPU to network. Should, you know, there should be silicon photonics on the Intel die. And they have been Intel's able to tried to solve this in all the chip manufacturers is to bring them approximately physically closer. Yes. The shorter the distance, at least you get less of that effect. So yeah, the shorter your distance, the higher you can the, increase the clock yeah, speed. And they're putting it in the chip. Yeah, you can increase die. the hertz, the, the signaling rate right. on the thing, as shorter that you go. Right, but that's limited too. You can't. You can only go so far. Well, that's part of Every time you shrink the die, you actually reduce the distance between the transistors. Right. right. And, and now we're hitting finite, you know, at 14 nanometers. We're supposed to be at 10. Intel's having troubles making Intel that. can't get to 10. Uh, oddly yeah. enough, Qualcomm has announced a 10 nanometer mm. FinFET. Yep. Eight, uh, the 835. Mm -hmm. I, I, do, you, do you feel that that's a fair prognostication that ARM is about to consume the... I think Intel's struggling to make it work financially. The final, final victory of risk... Processing. It might come down to some very obscure metallic, you know, uh, material science right. about, you know, doping what type of doping and what yeah. type of metal substrates they're using. And they may have made a decision five years ago to go down a particular technology. I'm not an expert enough here. No, but that happened with the itanium. Yeah. We saw yeah. that happen exactly with the yeah. itanium, where they went down the wrong road and yeah. ended up with a product that didn't work. Yes. And they had to rewind. And yeah. they were fortunate they had a skunk works in Israel that was working on something <laughs> yeah. better. Yeah. And, they, and yeah. save their But bacon. you're talking about, like, to build a silicon fab is a $5 billion investment over a 7 right. to 10-year cycle. More now. I think it's 10. Yeah. 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 Is this a healthy duopoly kind of thing that's really driving it forward, or is this a winner-takes-all situation? It's a winner-takes-all. Because it's so expensive to make these fabrication, these fabs, like the silicon fab. The these companies production. are really in the business of building fabs. That's really well, the but product. But that's what's interesting, because ARM is not. ARM right. is a fabless right. design. But... They're taking, the arm, they're taking the ARM designs and then manufacturing them at TSMC. Yeah. Qualcomm is, in fact, does have to build fabs or use TS TSMC. It uses TSMC. Fabs. TSMC yeah. has managed to build a 10 nanometer fab, but I haven't gone deep enough into the technology to know what type of silicon compound. Like right. there's a whole pile of, you know, gallium arsenide and right. I'm just not going to track the technology at that sort of level because, quite honestly, who cares? Well, we have uh, Kevin, such a Kev If stuff. Kevin Crewell is listening, Kevin, <laughs> if you want to call in, you can. He's the former yep. editor of uh, the, yep. uh, micro, uh, Silicon Micro yep. Magazine. So in networking today, we're now building components which do, we have a piece of silicon which can laser directly. So instead right. of using silicon, electrical signal into a laser, which is usually a crystal, which then um, is excited and transmits the laser, they're now building the laser directly into the silicon chip. So that's the 100 gig Ethernet wow. modules that you're doing today wow. as silicon photonics. Wow, right? that's amazing. But the, that is not, that materials that does the lasing, that actually is silicon that can laser and transmit, is not fit for CPUs. So you can't suddenly build that silicon photonics component in the same die that a CPU is, which is what we need. So to some extent, that's where the next advance is going to be, and Intel doesn't seem to be winning there. 
Um, I think also at a higher level, the fact that Microsoft has announced Windows on ARM. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I think the world is moving towards, and one of the advantages ARM has is better battery life. And that it's funny. I I love Marcus Brownlee's quote this week. Uh, MKBHD, of course, you know who he is. We've had him on, and his uh, YouTube channel is huge. He said, all I wanted for 2016, or maybe he said 2017, was bigger batteries. All I got was a missing headphone jack. <laughs> 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 and and uh, right on, yeah, right? Yeah, That's, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it's as if we're, it's as if the consumers, the Can buyers are saying... Can point out how much I hate Bluetooth headphones right here? Like, yeah. it, but you know what? Those awful. AirPods work. They did solve the pairing issue yeah. and the quality issue is the, the better yeah, quality. I am not sticking a piece of plastic tube in my ear, hard plastic tube in my ear, no matter how much. Yes, you been. are. <laughs> I like my AirPods. They actually fit my ear, though. If they don't fit your ear, you're out of luck. Cause uh, I Apple actually appreciate the size. fact that Apple is able to push people beyond what they think they want right now. And again, this is a conversation that we've had in... On, on your, you've had on, the, on your shows in many different ways, but basically people don't know that they don't want a floppy drive. People don't know that, you know, the people always whine and complain. I think that people drag, know they want headphone jacks and they're right. No, yeah, they don't. The <laughs> headphone jacks, it, it's an analog technology. Once you make it digital, magic happens and you have a new revolution. Yeah, like DRM. It underestimates the human nature to lose everything. Meanwhile, how do I charge the thing when I'm listening? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's a temporary problem. Eventually I'll be super grateful that they forced this kicking and screaming into this world. They did the same thing with on-screen keyboards. He's such an optimist. Nobody forgets that when <laughs> Apple, uh, 10 years ago, released the iPhone, people said, this is crazy. Nobody can use an on-screen keyboard. Give me a BlackBerry that has a real keyboard. Yeah. No, that's and right. And that sounds like crazy talk because all phones have an on-screen keyboard. We were wrong, and Apple was right, and I think that's the same well, thing with AirPods. Apple may win because already many Android manufacturers have announced no headphone jacks. doesn't uh, look like the Galaxy yeah. 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 There S8 are, there will are have a headphone Well, jack. the reason for that, of course, is mechanical because once you pierce the edge of the shell, right. you can't. Um, you have all these structural design. And, and, and Apple it also out. said it had to do with room in the thing. If you're putting an sure, analog But there's Apple a 25 millimeter jack instead of a 35 millimeter right. jack, right? Right. So there's an argument for both ways. My problem is is that the Bluetooth standard is so crap that it's simply not fit for purpose and right. why are we even bothering? It's like going to Bluetooth isn't going to create a new Bluetooth standard for at least two more years. So we're now stuck with substandard technology that we're being forced to use by a company that wants to drive me in a particular direction. That's my complaint. Not the fact that the jack's been removed, fine, but Apple should be in the Bluetooth body making them make a decent Bluetooth standard that actually works. Well, they are the largest manufacturer of Bluetooth headphones in the world, so they have some clout in this space, yep. and they claim this W1 chip that they invented for the AirPods is the key to all this. I have to admit, pairing is much better. Mm. Uh, you don't get the dropout, but there are some issues. There are sure. some issues. But as long as you're not poor. Yeah. yeah, oh, don't that's be poor. The thing, that's they're the also one that me crazy. Don't be poor in any of this yeah. stuff. Just yeah. when you get $14 headphones that actually sound decent, yeah. we have to go to $130 ones that you're going to lose more frequently. Yeah, that is a Women serious. aren't. 85% yes. uh, of AirPod customers are men, which really? I think is a very weird... Why is that? I don't know. Why is you that? You wear them with your hair yeah. in front of them, and nobody knows you look. Dorky. Congratulations! You now earrings. represent all of them. And you you <laughs> now represent them. Yeah. With all they actually, have earrings that will hold the AirPods if you if you we drop them. We don't get many women around here. Would you explain? <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's it's a it's practical. They're too expensive for yeah. too little games. Women are too smart yes. to fall for these. That's all. Pretty much. Yeah. They also the uh, reason my wife won't wear them. Lisa doesn't like them because there's one size and it's too big for her tiny yeah. little ear holes. Yeah. So that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah, customization. It has yeah. to be, a, you know, there's a difference between personalization and customization. Right, yeah. And Apple doesn't customize, yeah. but it does personalize, right? So Apple devices are very personal. People get very intimate yeah. with them in terms of, you know, everybody's iPhone is... I'm not getting intimate with those AirPods. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can say that, but I'm not. <laughs> never say never, Leo. <laughs> I'm not that desperate. Our show, we got a great panel, having fun, lots more to talk about. Greg Farrow's here from the Packet Pushers Network, packetpushers.net from GMA. Good morning, America. Becky Worley, who's up at 4 a.m. almost every morning talking to America <laughs> in her jammies. Only on the bottom. You do Stay it from, classy, San Diego. <laughs> you do it from the, your house sometimes. Not anymore. I go into, into San Francisco oh, you, every time. Oh, to the that's field. awful. I like it better. Well, yeah. There's no traffic at that hour, There's too. no traffic. I don't have to manage all the... You right. know, oh gosh. It's well, it's a better quality too. It's better quality. I don't anymore. have to be the technician, cameraman, right. and audio person. Free coffee. Right. 
Actually, they have little chocolates in the lobby. Ooh. And every time I finish my live shots, I take one piece of chocolate. Just one. Just one. But do you know what I think of when the alarm goes off at 2.30 a.m.? I can't wait you to cost. get the chocolate. Chocolate. Oh. I, it's amazing so the power smart. of small That's rewards. That's right. Very small smart. rewards. That's like a mouse try in that. a box. And for me, it's a pillow. I wake up at 2.30 in the morning. I think of my pillow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What the hell? Whatever <laughs> happened to my pillow? What is this giant marshmallow I dreamed about that I ate? Those aren't pillows. Uh, you know the joke. Uh, also, <laughs> Mike Elgin. Oh. had to get up pretty early in the morning to fool her on a joke. Uh, yeah. She knows them all. She knows them all. Our show today brought to you by the best solution for people who love magazines. I still love magazines. Almost every month there is a great article in Rolling Stone or Vanity Fair or Atlantic or the National Geographic or the New Yorker. Um, an article I'm dying to read. I can't always read online. A lot of times I can't read online. If it's National Geographic, I want to see the pictures, the, the photos. Well, now I can get it all on my iPad, on my iPhone, on my Android device with texture. I don't have to get the expensive newsstand edition. I don't have to worry about cluttering my house piling up magazines on my coffee table. Texture gets more than 200 of the best magazines in the world and delivers them right to your iPad where you can read them. It's just like reading the, the actual magazine. You have all the same pages. You turn the page. There's bonus features that you can't get in a magazine uh, like video and many of these. It's very affordable, much cheaper than buying a magazine at the newsstand or, or subscribing, and you just don't have the clutter. Plus, because you're going to get so many magazines, and texture is searchable, you can find so much stuff, find new magazines, new articles, back issues are there as well, of course. Now, texture is normally $9.99 a month, which is really a great deal. That's the cost of two magazines on the newsstand. Um, I like to take the sex quizzes in Cosmo. I don't know about you, but that's just fun for I me. I always fail them. Yeah, oh. almost always. I'm trying to. I'll, one day I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> uh, but that's, see, that's something I'm not going to buy Cosmo for that, but it's fun when you have it, or People Magazine, or you know, it's fun New when you have it. New Yorker for the ca cartoons, although everybody should read that cover to cover anyway. I love the New Yorker, and this is a great way to get it. You don't and need a course, subscription. Fast Company, which has some of the most it's brilliant writers. Great writers. <laughs> brilliant. Mike Elgin, in, Mike Elgin oh, in there. Oh my gosh. Cooking Light. I love it. Anyway, here's the deal. We're going to get you a 14-day free trial. Why subscribe to a couple of magazines when you can have them all? On your smartphone or tablet. I favorite the magazines I want. They automatically download, so even if I'm uh, disconnected in the air in the ca in a cabin somewhere, I can read my favorite magazines. Texture is giving you a free trial for two weeks when you go to texture.com slash twit. Texture, T-E-X-T-U-R-E dot -E com, just like text in a magazine. I don't know what the U-R-E is like. Texture.com slash twit. Two weeks free right now. We had a fun week. We had a lot of good stuff. Specials from CES. and Well, I'll tell you what, take a look. Previously on Twit, Megan and I teased on this very show that someday we would totally switch phones for a month. So I, I sent it to Chinese so that uh, it's even more complicated. <laughs> Great. You really <laughs> set me up for success here. Thanks a lot, Megan. Home Theater Geeks. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here, the Home Theater Geek. This week, I'm roaming the floor at CES 2017. We developed a technology that uses little actuators that vibrate the panel and make basically a stereo speaker system, and the voice comes from the screen, from the screen. not from below or from the sides. The new screensavers. This is uh, the bridge, a mixed Sorry, reality headset this. for the iPhone. What's new and special about it is you actually can map your environment and then do AR or mixed reality, where you bring characters or whatever the, into the world with you. Don't go in there! Yeah, no, there's 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 the no, no, it's a there's fake! There's it's a trap! Oh, that's so cool! Isn't that there. cool? No, 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 you put a hole in our wall! I didn't wall. know there was a bookstore. That is freaking cool! Twit. Now, where'd I put my iPhone? Silver lining is hopefully by the end of this adventure, we will embrace you back with our green Android arms, and we will have converted Miss Maroney. You, you, one would think. However, I have noticed ever since I've I've uh, started with with iOS uh -oh. that I'm really popular here at work. Lots of people want to talk to me. <laughs> and That's what happens when you buy an Apple We stand Josh around and we talk about like what you can do with your phone. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, oh, it's really Lord. cool. Oh Lord, yeah. That's actually fun. For a month, Jason and Megan are exchanging. So Jason, host of All About Androids, using an iPhone, and Megan, host of iOS Today, is using an Android phone. She's using a Pixel. And it's really interesting to watch. She seems to be hating it more she hates than, it. Yeah, yeah, you would think. Uh, and, but it's a bit of a struggle because Android, is a, there's a big learning curve, yeah. frankly, much more yep. so than the iPhone. Yep. So I think she's struggling a little bit with yeah. it. 
Um, I'm an, I love Android. I think the Pixel is an amazing phone. I, I think the real lesson, I, uh, you know, people always bash the other platform, but it's a lot of that is just you're just used to what the way your own to. platform That's is, right. and you try to use it, and it doesn't work. Right. It doesn't seem intuitive. Hmm. So. Phones is phones. Phones is Megan phones. is here with a look at what's to come this week. Megan? Thanks, Leo. Here's a look at just a few of the stories we'll be watching in the week ahead. Today is Wikipedia Day. On January 15th, 2001, the crowdsourced encyclopedia launched to the world, <gasps> which means that today is its 16th birthday and it would like you to buy it a car or give a donation. FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler resigns this week. He's already given his final speech in which he gave one last plea in support of net neutrality, which will arguably be his greatest legacy. This week, we officially say goodbye to six second video phenomenon Vine. Twitter has confirmed that they will shut it down on January 19th and convert it to the Vine camera. That's an app that will let you record Vine videos. The Vine community, however, and the social network will be no more. Netflix announces earnings after the close of market this Wednesday. We'll be watching for revenue, contribution margin, and subscriber growth numbers which are the big questions for Netflix since they continue to avoid the advertising model. Jason Howell and I will cover all of this and a whole lot more all week on Tech News Today. That's recorded each and every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And that is a look at the week ahead. Back to you, Leo. Thank you, Megan. Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Midnight UTC for Tech News Today. I didn't know Wikipedia is celebrating its 16th birthday. Wow. Today. That's amazing. This actually was a, so iPhone is 10 years old yeah. this week. Uh, the video game industry began in 1968 with the patent that made TV video games possible. Uh, ended up being the Magnavox Odyssey. Do you remember that? I don't think anyone yeah. remembers the Odyssey. <laughs> no. That was a terrible, <laughs> terrible thing. Uh, what else? Um, this was the big anniversaries of this day. Yeah. I still think Wikipedia is the most amazing example of what the internet's capable of. Yep. Just amazing. Yep. And the bravo. Of volunteerism. It right? is the wisdom and idiocy of crowds. And then there's Twitter. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> well, you like Twitter. I, it's so funny how the wide ladies, the ladies love, love Twitter. The, Twitter. <laughs> the ladies the, the, love the, the Twitter. The pendulum swings so drastically when I consider Twitter. Um, uh, me too. You actually. know, there's so it's much. A love hate thing. There's so much vitriol, and yet there's so much freedom, and they go so there's, clearly hand in hand. So I'm much. Of, I'm a huge Twitter fan because I don't have to put my personal information into it. Yeah. Whereas if I go into Facebook or Google or That's any of the point. other LinkedIn, I have to overshare all of my personal data. And you know, quite honestly, Microsoft owned LinkedIn. I don't trust Facebook. I don't think anybody trusts Facebook. Uh, and you know, I've got all sorts of you know ideas about that. But on Twitter, you can be whatever you like. And Can I share something that scared me this week, which was a website that I did not know exist called mm. Family Tree Now? Mm. Yeah, yeah. A lot Did of people you? shared that with Holy me. Holy cow. It doesn't have me. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. No, no, it doesn't. It does. Because I not only did I find you, I found your kids on it. It was unbelievable. So this thing is uh, an incredible linkage of databases that will say who your known associates are and your previous addresses. I found the address that you and Jennifer lived at back when you lived oh, in San Francisco. I wonder why it didn't find me the last time I used it. Um, and what's different about this than some of the other find people fast and all of those mm. sites, completely free and actually very elegant in its design. Um, I was totally tripped out by how immediate it was. I was mm. able to search tons of people. Wow, this it is, is really- too. The stalking- on this it's, site is scary. And it's you, got every address is, I've ever lived at. Yeah. yeah. You can opt that out. That would actually be kind of helpful because I've got, been quite a place. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. It's really interesting. Wow. I had a, I sublet Wait a minute. my- This is amazing. Where do they get this information? Is this from, uh, this has to be from credit records. I have no idea. This is the stuff you would normally pay for. You'd have mm. to create a login at one of these sites and then you would pay for these yeah. individual Normally report this is the kind report. of stuff you pay for. This is a scary stalking tool. You can opt out. I opted out on Friday and it, my information has been removed. Um, but just a little anecdote. But this is a genealogy site. Supposedly, but these aren't dead people. These are living people. Now, I sublet my apartment in Seattle in back in the early 90s. The guy stiffed me. I sued him in small claims court. He never paid. I've been searching for him for 20 years. Did you find him? Hired a private investigator, mm. found him on this site. He lives what? 10 miles away from me. What? Are you going to go visit him? Searched his name on LinkedIn. 2.30 in the morning. Guess where he works. 
guess who'll be getting a garnishment <laughs> notice from me? Wow. Ah. I have been looking on and off using all of these sites oh, for 20 wow. years oh and a private God. investigator, and only this found him. But now you have to find a new hobby. <laughs> you know, I got a lot of emails from people, and I saw a lot of tweets about Family Tree now, and I I thought I searched. I, I guess I didn't do it right, because you're right. I'm, Is this related there's to a lot of 23, and, 23 no. and me? No. no. It's a woman in Roseville, outside of Sacramento, mm. who started this database and has, I, it's incredibly elegant. It's mm. really good. Too good. And totally free and easy. Uh, there's a scary lot of information on here. And uh, boy, I'm puzzled by where this information is coming from. But I think really it's probably just collating information that's been spread around. They really don't talk much about the background. It just says we like taking services that typically cost money and making them free so everybody can use them. Uh, some technology veterans mm. we used to work at the NSA. <laughs> it's I think it's address-based because it like went all the way back to the known associates were like roommates that I'd had at different times or like the... Um, well, that the, would that would mean it's credit reporting. Uh, those are the credit agencies know all those uh, places. Maybe. But how would they get it out of the credit agencies? Probably got it off the hackers. <laughs> yeah, those credit know, agencies are know, hugely insecure. Actually, that's an interesting point. Because it could if you just be this is just collating a bunch of hacked If you just databases. collect a bunch of hacked databases, you could probably build a substantial part of On the dark web, web, go... Yeah. shopping for well that's sure. the thing Why that not? scares it's me about this really not being creepy because uh this is their about us page and it really pretty much doesn't say anything except here's their kitchen doesn't give an address it's in roseville california where's the board of directors right. it says yeah. no names of anybody mm. obviously these are real pictures of their ancestors yeah a lot of help that is that's it. Found yeah. those on Google. This sounds like the CIA to me. But also, because there's no sign-in, because there's no CAPTCHA, think of how easy this is to scrape. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You could automate this real quick. So that is... And why is it free? Well, you do pay if you want more, right? They have ads that run, that look exactly like records that are a part of their own uh, design and you click on it and you don't even realize it's a paid product until you get way deep in it and then they want to charge you. Um, and so, again, the good thing about it is you can opt out, and that did work, but creepy. Mm. Well, let me just sign in with Facebook and give them a little more information oh, that's good. <laughs> good idea. about me. Let's just do that. Nice. Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways. <sighs> U.S. only. That's the good news. Yep. It's funny, the uh, things we worry about that are... We perceive, mm. you know, government Well, everybody's actors. so worried about Google's and our privacy when they're reading our and Gmail. The NSA. They just go to this. Yeah, that's that's right. what I'm talking about. That stuff is out there. Yeah. Creepy, right? Facebook's, that's Facebook class data. Although Facebook's got a much more greater reach. They're actually tracking much more metadata about you. Like, they follow you around. They actually lay cookies in your browser and follow you around. And that's why I'm of this strong opinion that Mark Zuckerberg is going to run for president in 2020. <laughs> uh, the, 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 this is one of my favorite stories, that both Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos suddenly woke up one day and said, it was that easy? We ought to do this. Yeah. Full Tony Stark stuff, right? Yep. And... and what is the conflict of interest if the guy who runs Facebook, who can clearly totally manipulate the election, if he should choose to, yep. runs for president? I don't think he will be 35, uh, like the month before the filing deadline. I mean, it all fits into place. <laughs> and it makes perfect sense. And I, and I can even see, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, he's going on a 50-state tour to meet people in all 50 states this year. Mm. Yeah, On the back of a train. Uh, I'd rather be CEO of Facebook buntings? than the president. Why would well, anybody want to be president? And that's what everybody says when, when I say this. They say, well, why would you want the demotion? Right. Yeah. He's uh, already the emperor yeah. of the world. <laughs> uh, but, but It'd be useful to have a two million man army. Yeah, I don't, it'd be great to have Yeah, there's certain things as a private industry you don't have nukes. He doesn't have nuclear bombs, yeah. Uh, but he, I wouldn't be surprised, and I don't know Mark Zuckerberg, but, but what I, from what I know about Mark Zuckerberg, by the way, this article is by Nick Bilton, uh, is that he's a do-gooder. I think he's a... Do I am not of the opinion that he's the evil incarnate of a lot of people. I think he wants to... He really wants to make the world a better place. And I could see... And that what better bully pulpit, right? I, 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 can, can we argue about that? I don't think he's a do-gooder at all. So... Basically, his the man his, wants to give away his entire fortune. Of course, why just, not? Right, exactly. Why? So, how could that not be doing good? Because he stole you, it from somebody else. Money can money can buy you things. Okay, it can buy you 
material comforts. It can buy you security. It can buy you fun and frivolity. It can buy you lots of things. And one of the things it can buy you is influence. And he has enough money 10 times over to buy all the things that money can buy. What he doesn't have the money to, to buy is to have much more influence in how the world works. And and we all like, I, I like solar power better than other types of things. I have, we all have opinions that we Yeah, want. you have a pet, I, you know, pet project. Yeah, I'm not so crazy about GMOs. I, you know, I have all these different opinions. Right. What he's doing is he's promising to take his money and buy the things that currently his money can't buy. And that is he's going to throw all this money into things so that the world works the way he'd like it to work whatever that is. And and Bill Gates has done a similar thing to that. But essentially, it's we all saw the matrix. What do men with power want? They want more power. Mm. So he's spending his billions to put himself in a position to overrule other interests in the world uh, so that his ideas and his views yeah. and his desires yeah. Larry win Page the day. Larry Page wanted an island so he wouldn't be regulated. He even said it. He mm. had a Google I.O. He said, you know, we need. I want it's an that, island. I don't know all this interference. Well, you're talking about Mark Zuckerberg. He, he, after doing a big speech, anti-Trump speech about building walls, he went to Hawaii and built this big wall. No, it was not a big wall. It was a wall. It is a smallish wall to keep <laughs> to keep out the riff Three and a half feet. Right. I can climb and, a three and a half foot wall. And it, that wall is not comparable at all, and I know from firsthand knowledge. So. Okay. Becky knows. I, I think, I think the point you're trying to make, Mike, <laughs> is that the Silicon Valley hierarchy is so full of itself that That's it believes exactly it can go and true. fix the world. So they're going to go and take their billion well, dollars I'll and they're going to go, go and further. shove it down other people's throats. I'll go even further. And I Almost think becoming because president they, because is a they, good way to do that. And they, they believe they're the smartest people in the room mm -hmm. and most often they lack the empathy of a dead snake. That's exactly right. right. They are incredibly but, foolish but individuals. They're, they're, they're rabid very capitalists in, lining their pockets but mm. they want to couch their... Mm. Their 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 aspirations in in this like we're saving yep. the world. We're yeah, the only reason I don't think he's the devil is because I'm somewhat aligned with the things he wants. Right, yeah. 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 right. So, so you agree I'm, with him, but if I'm, you disagreed with him, then I'd be, he'd be very the devil. upset. Yes. Right, right. Yeah, that's but a that's, good, that's but a good that's point. The, that's How does that dis differ from Warren Buffett? Warren Buffett will not run for president. I right. think Mark Zuckerberg is going to run for president. But in terms and of Warren Buffett doing the most doesn't good also for the most people. He doesn't have a vision for doing good for he people. Gave he does. Money to the gates. I think Buffett is somewhat so humble. So he doesn't have a vision. He doesn't want to impose his vision. He plays humble people. well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I disagree you nailed with you it with guys. your description yeah. of the Silicon Valley uh, icons. Yeah. They, they, they are yeah. often the smartest. I remember Steve was They're this often way. smart. Steve Jobs was like the smartest person mm. in the room that didn't make them a good person. Yeah. But they, they, sometimes people who are so smart, don't they can't see the failings. Yes. And they believe that they are a good person, empathetic and mm -hmm. all this stuff. They don't understand that they in fact lack that. Yeah. And uh, so and I, that's I exactly what got us Brexit and Trump. Yeah, well, what's interesting is, uh, you know, and Nick's article says, he wants to be emperor is a phrase that's become common among people who have known Mark over the years. He points out some other data points. Remember, Mark got religion, or at least didn't deny that he was an atheist, right? <laughs> uh, he says, I believe religion's very important. He didn't say, I am religious, but that is a checkbox you have to his check if you're running for president. His sister's... Orthodox. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he just hired President Campaign's former campaign manager, David Plouffe, mm. to lead policy and advocacy for the Chuck Ch Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Who's been at Twitter all this time, and so he's been <coughs> in the private sector. Mm. Uh, he has, as I mentioned, announced he's going to meet people in every state. And maybe the biggest giveaway, <coughs> when Facebook reorganized so that he could give all this money to the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, mm -hmm. it was set up in such a way that he could continue to run Facebook even if he took public office. Mm. Well, wow. So conflict you, so you, of interest is not the issue one would consider. Well, but okay, <laughs> used to be. Uh, but that's interesting. So I think that this is about, you know, they're going to watch uh, President elect Trump very carefully to see if he can navigate that conflict of interest. Do you perceive Zuckerberg <laughs> as having an ideological bent at a at a severe angle to the president elect? Well, that would be, for, at least for Bezos and possibly for Zuckerberg, that would also be a stimulus, right? Oh, I never even thought. I could do this. Mm -hmm. I don't like what I'm seeing. It's I'm, about time for the smartest man in the room to run the place. Yes, right? that's what I think is yep. happening. But that doesn't necessarily ego. mean that yep. the smartest man in the room is the best person in the room. No, empathy is yeah. more is important. So I look agree. At, look at, you know, he, you wouldn't, he, he's thinking, I, without any help from the Winklevi, ushered into <laughs> existence this magnificent yes. Facebook 
Uh, and so and so those idiots in Washington, uh, they don't know what they have coming. I'm going to go in there and fix yep. everything. This is like when, when Eisenhower went into office, Truman uh, said, poor Ike, he's used to the military. You give orders and people do it. He's like, here, and when you're president, it's almost impossible to get anybody to do anything. No, in yeah. fact, yeah, I love that. That's Obama said that, and I've forgotten who else uh, said that the, pe the power of the presidency is merely the power to persuade. Right. Um, but I don't think people like Zuckerberg or Bezos mm. are know, thinking you, that way. If you have a publicly held company, I think you feel hamstrung all the time by That's the right. responsibilities you've you have to board. your shareholders you've got, and your yeah, board. Yeah. Yeah. But those things exist for good reasons. So if you cast your mind back to Victorian era politics, say around the 17th and 18th century, when the incredibly wealthy people who'd built <laughs> up you know, enormous wealth on the backs of slaves or trade or exploitation of the Far East or India or, you know, the colonies down in Africa and stuff like that. And then suddenly they developed a conscience and started to invest their money in making life good for their workers. And um, So, for Hall. example, in, uh, in England, in, during that Victorian era, the reason that they started to introduce uh, school meals was not because they wanted to be good for the children. What they actually were concerned about was one that the children were starving by the time they and they were growing up too small. Yeah, they're not good workers. They're not good workers, and they're also not good <laughs> um, army, not good soldiers, because they're not yeah. physically strong. Yeah. So they literally instituted feeding of the poor as a way to ensure the perpetuation of their p positions of privilege. I, I see it, but clothed, clothed it in generosity. Now, now what, what we're seeing I... is massive wealth distorts your perception of reality. I think. The rich are not like you and me. Well, no. they can do anything. So if you could do anything, wouldn't, and you were in a time where you felt afraid for mm -hmm. your child, your child of color. You want to be president. Your, your wife, whose public health is her main initiative, and you right. see the ACA being cut away. Right. Wouldn't you choose to do anything mm. to counter... What you're now, seeing is the erosion. No, I'd go to my Hawaiian island and build a higher wall. That's, it. <laughs> that's, that's your. That's you. Uh, you. You don't have Dothraki death meals when you watch Game of Thrones. Not you every night. Play, yeah, <laughs> apparently, that's what Mark does. So, show of hands, who would vote for Mark Zuckerberg as president? Uh, against whom? It would ah, depend. against whom? That's that's a difficult. It depends on what platform against Jeff Bezos? forward with. Yeah. <laughs> what <do you> Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, I'd vote for I'd vote for Zuckerberg over Bezos. Really? Yeah. Because yeah, Jeff Bezos is a megalomaniac. He I really mean, lacks empathy. Yeah, I, I that's think, not why I wouldn't vote for him. It's more that I I see him as such a capitalist, yes. more so than yeah. Zuckerberg. And, and I don't want to hear him laughing on TV. More policy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things are very lives. so. Things are very different. So I've grown up. I, I grew up in Australia, which is very much a social democracy, where there's a public safety net and a, a very substantial free healthcare. Uh, unemployment benefits and so forth and so on. And I now live in the UK. Again, social health care, very fundamental. I, I do not work in the US because there is no fundamental human rights here in terms of no public health care. There's no safety net. If you fall out of the system, let's say... Um, this is a country where you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yes. And it's up to you... Yep. To achieve, this is the just don't injure yourself while you're pulling. So why should stuff? I take care of you <laughs> exactly. if you don't want to take care? of I know, yeah, I love, I love that when the people. I mean, this is the only country in the world where medical bankruptcy is a thing. So the most really common, the only country. Yep. Where well, you can actually I go. Think we're number one in medical bankruptcy. <laughs> I believe so. We are. We are exemplary. In That's it. right. We have amazing medical bankruptcy lawyers, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. Amazing. <laughs> And that, that helps so much. I, I mean, I just, I'm a bit of a believer in this. You, I'm not a big fan of the universal basic income. I think there's so many flaws That's in it. That's um, insanity. No, there are reasons. When like, AI is doing all the work, then we've got to figure out some so, way for people so, to eat. So the basic <sighs> premise behind unemployment benefits or universal basic income is if you don't feed the people and keep them in their houses They'd and keep them happy. They make terrible soldiers. They come out of the houses and start causing they revolt, riots. Yes. They revolt. And you end up with the peasant uprisings of the, the years The truth is, it's very clear that yeah. the history of government is the history of trying to prevent peasant uprisings. It's pretty yeah. much, yes. And so if you don't start thinking about, like we're talking, I was reading a research article this week, I'll try and find the notes and get into the show notes. Um, they're predicting that something like 40% of middle management jobs will disappear in the next 10 years through machine learning and AI. So particularly imagine, let me give you a scenario. But every job below that or a great deal of the jobs below that will also disappear. Uh, Forget middle management, who's going to drive? Nobody. Yeah. Who's going to be a cashier? But middle Nobody. management has typically been safe. 
right? They they sit in a they. Uh, what they're saying the now first is first like, people I fire is the middle manager. <laughs> okay, I, got, I have, the, I have a hypothetical question for you. Mm. Yeah. They don't do anything. Uh, as long human as the resources. tech journalists are okay. I mean, yeah, so, so <laughs> quarterly review. So they're talking now about artificial intelligence, which will conduct the quarterly review. Oh God! Review. So you will literally have it's a voice AI. It's time for your performance rating. <laughs> yes. Come to my <laughs> office. They will that conduct already, those every quarter. Google already has software that knows who's going to quit and when. So when I went up to Amazon to talk to them about this new concept they have for stores that have no cashiers. You walk in, you get your stuff, sensors tell them. They already have that. It's called shoplifting. That's what I said. That's amazing technology that yeah, already exists, incredible. right? They said that as many people will work in those stores as work in your current 7 -11s Working in security? Because they're going to be prepping the food. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They're going to be doing all the back-end work. Mm -hmm. Because what you're going to buy is stuff that's going to eradicate cooking, or it, they're going to be able to allocate all this other resources. Rubbish. I what? was utter, not enough utter jobs. I, not I, enough I was jobs. amazed that they were trying to spin this. Like, wh how are you even so thinking? So the first store might come out with all that great, and then straight after that, someone will, there'll be an accountant looking at the bottom line, going, you know, if we got rid of all those high cost goods, we could just increase our profit margin, and da da da. Boom. That's that sounds like utter utter rubbish. Here's one other question. They're building themselves. They probably what would you tell your kids? What do you tell your kids that they should pursue going forward so that they can survive in this world? I think it would be folly for me to try and predict who they will be and who the future will be. So they're screwed. Pretty much. I think but that's the whole point. Is <laughs> oh, we've okay. all figured it out. If you a my, universal uh, basic income, maybe that's maybe they don't have to work. My maybe theory is that behind like, a universal in, basic income is that there are you, you will have vast unemployment, and those people if you they don't have jobs to take, what do they do for food and medical? In, and in most cases, what happens though, uh, at least so far with mm. universal basic income, is it eliminates all entitlements. So you get yes. a uh, you get a lump sum. But you're responsible for your health care and everything else out of that lump sum. Well, I, in this, in the U.S., where health care is a problematic industry, yes. But in other countries, it would not necessarily be. Didn't they basically me, have that in Alaska? It feels yes, because they had oil, right? Right. So they got an oil check. Everybody got a big check. Um, How my, that work my out? My fear is that this is a, a perpetual motion machine mm. because uh, who's providing the money? I mean. What I'm going to then give the money to the corp. I'm going to spend my some yep. of my income so the corporations can make money so they can give me back my income. But that doesn't. It's, yeah. it's, it's there not has to be work. something, right? Because if something you're something enter, if you have a, adding value to the system, like right. oil reserves, right. adding value to the system. Right. Well, look at the What's riots you saw that? in Ferguson. Right. Why did those people start <laughs> to riot? Fundamentally, it comes down to poverty. Poverty. Right. So if you don't start thinking about, so if you start to increase, oh, I agree. You know, cut jobs at I radical agree. levels. You're now going to have vast unemployment. Those it's people will, will suffer. You know, if you it's don't have enough food, or don't have enough health care, or whatever, then what? What else is there? Anyway, I think it's fair to say that fake news and the Comey letter and all that aside, Trump won fundamentally because a lot of people were scared because they didn't see a future. Mm. Um, and well, it's I, very difficult to understand social democracy. The idea of that government spending can be. Well, and, Stimulus. Uh, uh, well, a safety net yeah. can yeah. keep you, you know, safe. Unfortunately, right? it's, I think, a non-starter in the U.S. just because yes. of our national uh, yeah. history and our personalities. Yeah. We just, we how just how universal basic income works out over time, you know, there's going to be models. I mean, how do, how do we get to the current set of, of economic models that we operate society on today? They've evolved over two or three hundred years. So trying to predict where UBI goes is very, very difficult. But we know some form of it will be needed if we start continue to reduce jobs with tools like Facebook. Look at what Facebook's done for recruiting. Look what LinkedIn's done yeah. for recruiters and just wiped out vast industries. Like, And there's no more need to place job ads in the local newspaper to find them because you go and find them somewhere else, right? So all of that technology that these guys, people in Silicon Valley get all clever and feel great has actually been destructive to the economy overall. Yeah, I, I wrote a column about this and did a lot of thinking about it. And it's like you, they talk about disruption. Let's disrupt this. Let's yep. disrupt that. Um, within Silicon Valley circles, disruption feels like uh, something is being fixed. Outside of Silicon Valley, disruption mm. sounds like something's mm. being broken. Okay. Yeah. So basically, somebody like is going to have self-driving trucks. Well, there's a, a hundreds of people who own small trucking companies, and that disruption means disruption. that one 30-year-old is going to crush your industry and become a billionaire while you get in the unemployment line. Exactly. That's what disruption is to a lot of the world, and I think that has 
a yeah, lot well, of so you look at Amazon's politics. public cloud. We're talking yeah. now about Amazon's public cloud. AWS is running roughly around about a $10 billion run rate. Yeah. Depending on who you listen to and who, what sort of numbers you use, that's probably destroyed 50 to $100 billion worth of revenue in the wow. enterprise IT market. Wow. It's either a five to 10 to one. So what, what, who, every who dollar is, that who is disenfranchised by AWS, uh, Oracle, Cisco, IBM, oh, couldn't Packard. happen to a nicer guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But you know um, the, the the companies who used to produce software, the companies that used to produce computers, that which is done in enterprise IT needed people and salespeople right. and right. So it's not just companies; it's also headcount are being reduced. You don't need so many salespeople. In my in my grandmother's lifetime, technology changed at a faster pace than at any time in history. Right. In my mother's lifetime, social norms changed at a faster pace than in any time in history. Mm. And I think that in my lifetime, economics will change at a faster pace than in any time in history. And that's what we're fundamentally looking at. Interesting. I, I would agree with that. Wow, you guys are smart. <laughs> I just want the new iPhone. <laughs> you can have it. You yeah. Please, Honey. can I have it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, lots more to talk about. Mike Elgin, Becky Worley, uh, Greg Farrow. You, it's, this is a good panel. I hope everybody's enjoying uh, this conversation. Very, very interesting. We've, we've danced around politics, with, <laughs> yeah. I think, with real... Um, a, not, a razor's edge. Yes. <laughs> I hope no, it's been a razor's edge. Dancing on the razor's edge. There's Nobody said golden showers. Just... <laughs> oh. oh, there we go. <laughs> Actually, we could talk a little bit about that. There is there is some... Uh, there's a tech angle to this uh, leaked dossier. That's uh, interesting. I shouldn't say leaked, but it, it's <laughs> interesting. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, one of the pieces implied that Telegram... The uh, secure messaging service created by Russian, the, 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 the Mark Zuckerberg of Russia, Pavel Durov, uh, in fact, was cracked by the FBS, the Russian security service, and that some of the information came from that. Yep. Telegram was quick to deny that they had been hacked, but they've always used their own roll your own encryption, which has never really been fully vetted. In fact, right. there's... Good reason to think it may not be fully secure. They had a good explanation for what the cra what they believe the, the the leak was, which had to do with uh, phone number verification uh, of a, of an account. But um, I thought that was that was very interesting. I, I, I always get a kick out of uh, maybe not want to use uh, Telegram anymore for right. secure messaging. Well, but see, you don't know what is secure and what isn't. I, I always get a kick out when people say, "Oh, well, the NSA can't crack that, and the GCSQ we don't can't know, crack do that." We? we don't know. We don't know. They exist to crack everything, and they have. You know, I'm sure that they have access to things, lots of things that we have no idea that they have access. to. Well, here's to. what we do know: that we know that the math is hard, but we also know that it is solvable. That it is crackable given enough time and horsepower. Mm -hmm. And what we what's the missing piece of that puzzle is how much horsepower the NSA is capable of applying. Um, so for the current generation of cryptos that we're, like, we're talking about 1,024 keys, yeah. it's generally assumed that that's not crackable with brute force. So you can't just feed the key into At it. At all? At all. No, it's in, in fact, until quantum computers come through, the broad assumption is It's just is not it's fast enough. Just and not. I use a 4,096-bit key. Yeah. But the challenge was with Telegram was that there is, if at any time you can get the keys then you can take control of it. Right. And in this particular situation... It does have some forward secrecy, but it's not perfect yeah. forward secrecy. Yeah. But this is just a known, you know, if you're right. using public key cryptography and if you can get to the right place, then yes, you can get those keys and you can decode You could decode right. every But that discussion. applies equally to TLS, and equally right. to... You know, but there is perfect second. forward secrecy. There yes. is off the record. That's right. There yes. are technologies. In fact, that's It's only if you implement Telegram in a specific way right. that it's actually insecure, and that is by design. Right. Of insecure because that's right. the only way the program can work. Right. So it's uh, not like Signal is still. And now yeah. what's interesting is WhatsApp was accused of having a flaw. Uh, Moxie Marlin Spike, who created uh, the OTR protocol used uh, that's by Open Whisper Systems, uh, the protocol used by WhatsApp and Signal, says that was a misunderstanding of how Signal worked. And in fact, he does not believe yes. that uh, WhatsApp has a backdoor. There is no WhatsApp backdoor, says Moxie Marley. If Moxie says it, then it's going to be I true. trust Moxie. Yeah, for my purposes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he knows a lot. I, he knows a lot more than, uh, than mortal man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yes. 
So, uh, and I'm I'm sure Steve Gibson will talk about this on Security Now on uh, Tuesday because at length, no doubt. At l <laughs> Steve does nothing uh, with brevity, so yeah. Uh, but, you'll, but he but does we'll it with so much enthusiasm yes. the whole way and through, and we'll understand it better by the end. Yes. So. yes. Talking about security, you want you don't want people skimming over the details. You want no. all the details. Yeah, I agree. It's like I would say, you don't want me to be your surgeon. You know, I will leave a tool inside of your body. That's like saying that's how I feel about it. don't yeah. you don't want me to be no. your security guru well and that no. was the complaint about telegram is they rolled their own in yes. crypto and that's not well, that's, generally that's in the history of, you know that's a long-term history that's why everybody basically is moving to open source tls libraries right. that have been known and tested right. and tried mm -hmm. is because you can't do it yourself right and well and much better if, having one implementation globally right. where mm -hmm. conceptually everybody you know it's either all or nothing that the flip side of that of course is if there's a bug in that library we're all done great great <laughs> so, new video from the eff we've been playing it i asked our staff to throw this in baritone thurston explaining encryption and this why it's so important is the internet and it's filled with unencrypted it really is data. a series of tubes data that can be targeted by all kinds of eavesdroppers the hacker looks all I like need is wi fi and some software and not a coincidence i can see everything you're up to the eff has been protecting your privacy online for over 25 years and now their goal is to encrypt the web the <clears> whole thing Switch every site from insecure HTTP to secure HTTPS. That's what you're talking about. TLS. TLS. Makes yes. all the difference. It's you ever seen him wear a suit and tie? He really cleans That's up. That's a great. good looking fella. The lock lets you know your session is safe. Here's yeah. the problem. We used to call it Not SSL, every site but now it's really TLS. Yeah. So, but the EFF yeah. has you covered SSL with fundamentally two powerful insecure. tools. At the first level. is HTTPS that, everywhere. It's a plugin for browsers like Chrome and Firefox. It encrypts your communication with most major websites. So they can't spy on it. They being the hacker. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, <laughs> people with the, the hacker flipped me off. Questionable <laughs> choices in <laughs> style. This is also good. Now, this is, is, this, this is not Let's Encrypt, but it's a similar hassle. technology. CertBot simplifies huh. and automates the whole thing. Sounds like it works very similarly. Zero dollars. This is like the modern day and public that's service announcement. the beginning. Is this great? Find out all yes. the ways the EFF is protecting Ah, oh, so it's a, online. all right, I see what it is. It's EFF. a tool for deploying Let's Encrypt certificates. Oh, it is Let's Encrypt, okay. Yeah. okay. So they deploy Let's Encrypt certificates. Now, Let's Encrypt is very important because it's actually a, a conglomerate of big technology companies right. funding it. And it's like, free and it's easily free. implemented. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, I use Let's Encrypt. A lot of people use Let's Encrypt. Yes. It's really great. Yeah, I think so. The only My only concern is who's funding it. Because once you can get your hands on those private keys, you can theoretically decode everything. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that Let's Encrypt does, which is interesting, is that the key is only good for three months. Yes. So you get so a new key every 90 days. That's deliberate because when you do certificate keys, you want to revoke them. So let's right. say I gave you a certificate right. and now I want to revoke that certificate because right. you're not who you say you are. So instead of maintaining certificate revocation lists, CRLs. Which, by the way, Google has said we don't want to do. Fire right. Mozilla doesn't want to do. It's impossible. No, it doesn't work. Well, what actually would have to happen is your browser, every time you connected to a website, you would have check. to go and check a yeah. CRL yeah. server to say, is this right. certificate revoked? And right. if it is, then you would have to, that round trip time, not only have you got to connect to a DNS lookup, then connect right. to the web server, and now you've got to do a CRL. Well, on a mobile phone, now you've put your phone down and walked away and no ads can be shown and no, Google's not making money. Right. So you want to get away from CRL. So the answer to, you, to that is to go for a 30 to 90 day Revocation. So you just re revoke the certificates. Automatically. Well, yeah, they have an expiry date. Mm -hmm. So at 30 right. to 90 days, they automatically just switch off. And that's effectively your revocation. But what's great about Let's Encrypt and the, and, and the CertBot is it's automated to renewals. So yes. you don't even really have to pay any attention. I have a yeah. uh, an automated script that just every 90 days gets me the new yeah. Let's Encrypt. Uh, so the most common uh, HTTP server software, you know, Apache, Nginx, and Harproxy. And you just download CertBot and run it on those machines and the crypto nice. keys will just rotate automat automatically. <clears throat> I love seeing Baratunde in a, th in a thoot. <laughs> and by the way, uh, another reason, uh, you know, to support EFF, because they're really mm -hmm. doing God's work. I give them uh, a monthly uh, donation. I have, a, I have monthly donations for Wikipedia, uh, EFF, uh, and then a few like ACLU and a few others like that. Because I, I think we got to support these mm -hmm. uh, institutions. Mm -hmm. Uh, going forward. These are the institutions that are that are making us safer and uh, making the world a better place. Let's take a break real quick. More to come <clears throat> in uh, just a moment, including the hackers being hacked. Uh, but This Week in Tech This Week brought to you by IT Pro TV. Good friends of mine, people who are teaching you the info you need to be a better IT professional or to become an IT professional. 
this is a great job market. I think it's got to be the fastest growing job market of all. Uh, and it's so many opportunities. So if you're thinking of starting a career in tech, in IT, or you want to get better at your job that you already have, you don't have to go back to school to do it. In fact, it's this, the school is the most expensive way to do it. <clears throat> and maybe you're a self-starter, but just going to the bookstore and buying a bunch of books, that's a little challenging and expensive. IT Pro TV is the middle way, the best way. Great, entertaining, engaging content, just like Twit. They stream 9 to 5 Monday through Friday Eastern Time. They cover all of the major certs. They have 2,000 hours of content, and they add 30 hours more every week. You can stream them using your Chromecast, your Roku, your Fire TV. They've got a great Apple TV app they just launched, of course, on your PC or your tablet, and they cover everything. You want to get the... Uh, Certified Ethical Hacker. That's the cert I want, C-E-H. They've got it. <laughs> They've got it. They've got the version 9. Mm -hmm. CompTIA's Project Plus. Certified Information Systems Security Professional. Cyber Security Analyst Plus. CCNA Cyber Ops. Uh, ITIL Operational Support and Analysis. Microsoft System Center. And also, you know, the stuff, the day-to-day -day stuff that makes you money, like Microsoft Office and managing Apple computers, things like that. You, you get the Virtual Machine Labs. Uh, which are awesome. You don't have to have a Windows server. You don't even have to have a Windows machine, just an HTML5 browser. You can configure the server, configure the clients, and every time I do it, I blow it, but it's easy. You just press the reset button, you start over. Mm. Transcender practice exam, so you can take the test before you take the test. That's worth 109 bucks by itself. I love IT Pro TV, and you're going to love it too. We've got a great seven-day trial for you and a really big discount, normally $57 a month, which by even then, that's a good deal. Or get a year, that's the most economical, $570 a year. That's less than buying the materials, let alone going to a technical school. But if you use our offer code TWIT30, TWIT30, it's 30% off for the forever, for the lifetime of your account. ITPro.tv slash TWIT. Tim and Don are good friends, really love what they've done, and they're just knocking it out of the park. Incidentally, they are going to be introducing a new membership level beginning February 1st. And I think you're going to want to subscribe now because all current premium members as of that day will be given, will automatically be given the highest membership level. So effectively, you want to lock in this price now. Do it today. ITPro.tv slash twit and use the offer code twit30. Mm. Uh, we have uh, one of my listeners from the Packet Pushers uh, actually emailed us and what he does is every day he spends one hour watching videos it's all it takes it's all it just takes just it. Yeah. and he doesn't sit the exams he doesn't do whatever but what he's doing is learning all the stuff of, that's around right. him so he's in this particular job but by listening to the videos and watching stuff he's suddenly becoming aware of what all the people around him the, are doing the value of the test is moot it just helps you get that first job because yep. without this you know you have no way to prove that you can do it so well, he's actually looking for where he wants you've to got go a so job, he's doing a bit of a you can yeah. then upgrade your you yeah know, and this is a, a great way to do yeah, it yeah i think it's great yeah. <clears throat> uh, Celebrite, you know the name. It's a company uh, that makes a device that law enforcement uses to suck the data from your phone. They also, we think, uh, are, may have been the company that sold the hack to the FBI that allowed them to get into the Bakersfield uh, iPhone. Uh, they've been hacked, which frankly is not good on your resume if you're a uh, security firm. Uh, according to Motherboard, which has been doing a great job on uh, tech coverage, Joseph Cox writing, uh, 900, Motherboard has obtained and va validated 900 gigabytes of data from Celebrite, including customer information, databases, technical data about their products, and most importantly, uh, you can use this information uh, to see who's been using their My Celebrite domain, which is the yeah. the portal you log into to get new software versions and make sure you've got the latest version. Celebrate is widely used by U.S. and federal law enforcement. Plus, according to the hacked data, possibly also with authoritarian regimes in Russia, the UAE, and Turkey. Mm. And Family Tree Net. And family <laughs> Sorry, we shouldn't make comments like that. That's not. I was just joking. It's, it's depressing, um, though, isn't um, it? That uh, anybody think, can be hacked. Anybody so can be hacked. So uh, we, I do. We do a show every week where we talk to some of these issues. We've actually just stopped bothering with breaches because it's pointless. It's too common. It's so common. The second thing is there's no impact. So look at Yahoo. Lost a billion accounts over a sustained five-year period, and yet Verizon still bought them for the value that was agreed. Yeah. So they've gotten away with that um so if well, that a breach of that magnitude should have had in any reasonable reading of the situation 
some sort of impact to the company financially. Here's the good news. We don't have to talk about it anymore. Yep. Uh, President-elect Trump has appointed a... <laughs> What are you laughing about? <laughs> the mayor of New York. The, the former mayor of New York as his cybersecurity advisor, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> now, you may say, well, Rudy Giuliani, what does he know about security? Oh, no, he has a company, a full-service security investigative and crisis management consulting firm called Giuliani Security and Safety. Let's just run over to that website right now. No, oh. <laughs> this site can't be reached. The reason is... It was a mess. It was running a four-year-old copy of Joomla. With <laughs> Joomla is a comedy of errors. With more than a dozen known Joomla, exploits. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you could, I mean, it had a publicly, look at this is, this is uh, Michael uh, Feenan, uh, who I guess is a security researcher. As soon as he heard Giuliani had been appointed to the cybersecurity job, he checked expired SSL certificate, doesn't force HTTPS, mm. exposed CMS login, so you can go in there and brute force the login at, you know, at your leisure. Yep. Uh, it uses Flash. Well, you know what's you. probably great about this is he probably put security company on his resume. Yeah. And got away with it. Yeah. So now he's, just, so now he's there, it's fine. Right? Uses, no, he's, uses version 5.4 of <laughs> PHP. So what you're saying with this, with this list of, of things that are not quite right in his field of, of expertise is that he is one of the better qualified candidates <laughs> that <laughs> well, is being put on. What know. amazing I mean, foresight to set up a security company like, you know, seven or eight years ago, knowing that this situation was coming. So we need a man like that. Who's going to take on cybersecurity? I doubt that. I, I think. I think the thinking seems to be that uh, we get. We need to get tough on the cyber. <laughs> the, the cyber, cyber. and Giuliani is tough. It was End either that He's or, the guy. It was yeah. either that or Barron, and uh, I think they made the right choice. <laughs> I don't know. Barron might. Barron knows looks the tough. cyber. That Barron guy. That kid is good. Uh, that, <laughs> have you heard about Trump's razor? <laughs> it's it's the it's the maxim that the stupidest explanation is always the right one. <laughs> Any event, uh, uh, I I don't know even where to, to begin. Uh, the, the 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 nation's future president, he will be a president on Friday. His security advisor, cybersecurity advisor, the guy. Remember, Trump uh, really in his press conference blamed the DNC for their lousy security. Yes, they got hacked because they were insecure. That's all. Yep. Uh, is now uh, putting uh, his trust into a man who can't <sighs> even run a website. So on the other side of this, the sort of that sort of at that sort of level, you're security chops aren't actually all that relevant. No. What actually matters is your ability to bring people to the table. Well, it's clear that Rudy knows where to go to get the best people yeah. to run his website. <laughs> From five years ago. <laughs> Can I go back to that point you made about breaches and the idiocy mm. of reporting on them? Because yep. I really think that there's an opportunity for me to learn from this. Mm. Um, in conjunction with an anecdote, I was at the grocery store, uh, like a little mom and pop bodega kind of place, and the guy was asking me about my credit card, did I feel nervous because it was a high limit credit card? I said, no, I use a service on my phone that lets me see every time a transaction comes through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't freak me out because if, if something comes through, I see it almost immediately. And he calls his son up, did you know about this? The mint, the mint. <laughs> and uh, the son says, I don't trust it. <laughs> and I said, well, it's owned by Intuit. And you know, that's a, a good indicator that it's not a fly by night company. Mm -hmm. He says, doesn't matter. They've all been hacked. I don't trust anybody. <laughs> and then at the same time, I got in the car and there was an NPR uh, interview going on and it was this Russian journalist and she said, when you don't trust anything, you can't believe in anything. Yes. And I just thought that was so interesting, this concept of like, we don't trust companies, mm -hmm. we don't trust governments, we don't trust the security of you know our security services. So we're in not just post-truth, but we're in like a what do you believe in then? We're screwed. It's post-belief. Post -belief or post-fundamentals. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, yeah. the, the, the breaches thing is just yes. really true to me because mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm continually yeah. reporting, oh, this it, breach, that breach. No, it's no point talking about the breaches. I mean, look back at um, Target when it got breached. How's its share price doing? Right. right. Bing. Up and to the right. Glorious. Doesn't matter. So Heartland payment systems. You know why? Up and to the right. There's zero penalty. We don't care. Um, Can I make one other point? We pay 3% on all of our credit card purchases. That's why we don't care, because yeah, they yeah. have the liability. Yeah. That's The unbanked should care. Yes. They're the ones who's who have more at risk. Yes. And they're um, going to be the ones who are going to struggle, because if you don't have a, an electronic transaction capability, you will be frozen out of the system over time. Um, and, you know, the financial... Apple Pay, for example, you know, this ability to wave your Apple Watch at, at a coffee shop is really... 
the coolest thing ever, right? <laughs> so let's face it. You know. Yeah, but who can afford it, right? It's, yeah. You've got to buy what, it, What, the right? coffee or an apple? Yeah, the, <laughs> sorry. Both. Yeah. I guess if you could afford the coffee, you could <laughs> afford an Apple Watch. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, that's right. You know, if you've got the privilege to own an it's Apple Watch and an Apple phone, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you've got to have like $2,000 worth of assets to use a, to wave your watch and get by a transaction. Just like buying online, you know. So you can shop on Amazon provided you've got a $600 phone or a $500 laptop to buy on Amazon. It's totally yeah. free. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, your data breaches don't just happen uh, at Target. Uh, they might also happen uh, at Best Buy. So oh. the Geek Squad. Now, this That's is an interesting, uh, challenging story mm. because no one likes child pornography. Mm. That's a bad thing. Uh, and when you bring your computer to Best Buy... And if the technician is going through your computer and happens to see child pornography, it is their legal requirement to report you, to turn you in. It's anybody's. Anybody's. Not just, not just yeah. Best Buy. If I'm looking over Greg Farrow's shoulder, I notice he's got that film on there. I can't. <laughs> but if I were able to read his screen, I might want to turn him in. I don't know what he's doing. But I no. But the, this is where it gets interesting. And by the way, a court, a judge has ruled, no, the defense can bring this up. Uh, a California doctor is facing federal charges after his hard drive was fa was flagged by a Geek Squad technician. Uh, but the lawyer, in uh, the process of discovery for his defense, found the F FBI had cultivated eight sources in the Geek Squad over a four-year period, with all of them receiving payment. And at that point, the judge says, well, you can pursue this. Is the Geek Squad an employee of a federal agency, in which case the search is illegal because it's a warrantless search. So a private person, I can look at your hard drive and it's not a warrantless as search. Citizen. So as a citizen, a citizen, you can reward it, report it and it, go ahead. But, There's no false motivation. But if, if that person is being paid by the FBI to look, <clears throat> then a warrant is needed. I don't know how this is any different. I mean, I watch all the police procedural dramas. They all use CIs to go do illegal things. All and the then, time. All the time. And then they get this information through the illegal activities of the person they're paying. And then they go and they're like, well, we didn't do it. We're the, you know, we didn't break and enter. We didn't do these other things. And everybody's like, yeah, you know, the right side wins again. <clears throat> and it's like, it, this feels to me, I, it, has the, it has the flavor of just something that happens in the world generally has now entered the world of technology and privacy. And now we're like, oh, my God, this has to be stopped. But this happens all the time. Right. Mm. So is well, the issue it happens the legal... In the, let me just, as a global person, somebody who doesn't necessarily just live in the U.S. A citizen of the world. Mm. It only applies in the U.S. So the U.S. Um, well, that's the whole NSA thing. NSA can gather information about foreign nationals. You no, know, the way the police force works in this country is it works with very little funding. So their only way to make it stick is to use CIs and... Uh, to, to do entrapment and stuff like that. It's not legal to do that in most other countries in the world. It's just the way your legal system works here. Wait, oh, yeah. entrapment's not legal. I mean, I think that, that, that that's an overarching assumption. I mean, what, I'm abbreviating legal, what is The judge will throw discussion. it out if he detects it. So the, the point is, this guy signed his computer over to Best Buy. Yes. Best Buy found this file in a weird partition that had been erased. They had to formant, dig through it, in other dug words. Dug through the hard drive looking right. for evidence. Looking for evidence. That Best seems Buy to be the did case. not receive a payment. No. But the bounty... And that's the question is this is a bounty. It's or like is a it a prepayment or is it a bounty? Yeah. And yeah. therefore that went to the individual. So if you did that in other countries, European countries, Asian countries, that would be entrapment. Right? It's not, it's just not allowed. You can report that as a citizen's arrest, but the way that, so for example, in this country, when you, let's say you get arrested as a drug on a drug offence, a minor drug offence, the police will make it a condition for you, they will let you off, they'll cut you a deal if you go and find eight more drug dealers and report them. So that is an exclusively something that only happens in the US. It's not something that happens outside Well, of but country. I'm sure this is the case in uh, in other countries. If a, a psychotherapist, yes. protected by, a, you know, client privilege, does hear of a crime yes. that is about to be committed or being mm. committed is required. There's a reporting requirement, is there mm. not? It, That's true in other countries. And also that it? kind of payment for, for illegal snooping and all that kind of stuff, in fact, is much wider uh, spread than you claim. I mean, in, 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 in Asia, you mentioned Asia, in China and Japan, mm. two massive countries, uh, that is fairly widespread. And then beyond the English-speaking yes. world in Europe, 
Um, you know, most most countries don't fit in those categories. This I should, sort of I should thing, exclude the goes. French system out of this because sure. yeah, that's a completely different. Ex especially recent. I, I don't want to conflate this beyond whatever. I'm saying yeah. that there are aspects of this which are unique to the U.S. legal system mm -hmm. yes. and the way that your legal process runs. Right. So therefore, I just wanted to highlight that. Well, in fact, you know, that's why the judge has allowed the defense attorney to pursue this yes. uh, line of questioning because it, it it does raise the issue of the legality of the evidence. Mm. If and and here's a memo, for instance, from uh, 2010. Where an FBI, 2010, six years ago, an FBI agent said, Source has reported all has been quiet for the last five or six months. However, Source agreed mm. that once schools started again, they may see an influx of child pornography. Uh, the, the Best Buy technician involved in this case was later identified as a source. So for six years, the FBI has been in direct com uh, co uh, communication with this Best Buy Geek Scott technician and has been encouraged and has been saying, Do you see any, is, what's going on? Mm -hmm. uh, and so this. This, two, this is what the defense attorney says. This two-way thoroughfare of information suggests the FBI considers uh, the Best Buy technician to be a partner in the ongoing effort of law enforcement to detect and pro prosecute child pornography. So uh, that's where this might, in fact, get that evidence suppressed because it is illegal search and seizure mm. if he's working for the FBI. I always question myself in these stories by saying substitute child pornography for yeah, tax evasion. That's the problem. Because is, it, it, it's that such a one is loaded. So, yeah. Yeah. If if some if someone was reporting tax evasion based on Excel spreadsheets that they found in uh, partitions that had been deleted on a on a computer, I think we would all very clearly articulate <laughs> yes. this is not okay. Yeah. It's it's very difficult. Yeah, so that's where I would say if they have a legal mandate or we have a different set of rules for child pornography or the imminent well, harm and to there be done is, to it a might human. be different rules because you do sign when you hand over your hard drive to Best Buy that you have waived any right to raise a Fourth Amendment claim uh, because you have to sign this. I am on notice that any product containing child pornography will be turned over to the, to the authorities. Done. So you've been you're on notice, right? Mm. On the other hand. Uh, the, the Geek Squad guy has, has apparently lied uh, to investigators saying, I do not remember ever being paid by the FBI and prosecutors have acknowledged the FBI paid him $500. It's uh, probably because the FBI told him this. not to sell anybody who's working when for the, the FBI. FBI. Gives me five hundred dollars. Yeah. Like, <laughs> anyway, remember anyway. And you're right. Child pornography muddles muddies the water because yeah. nobody is going to say, oh, they shouldn't uh, go after this guy. And in the transition of the of the of the show, it also muddies the water in the world of advertising. Leo. Child pornography does? Yeah, with Fark, the Fark story. Oh, I love yes, this story. And yes. of course, we know Drew Curtis very well. Friend He's of the show. Friend of the show. I've been a fan of Fark since we used to have him on weekly on the, the old screensavers. And he's pretty upset. There's a couple of uh, things going on. He's pretty upset because Google has blocked him from having ads. Now it turns out he's not alone yeah. in this um, what's going on, Mike? He's uh, so Drew Curtis, of course, with Fark. Um, basically, there was a story from years and years ago that contained a photograph, which, in after a little bit of digging, they found was a photograph of a fully clothed adult. I'll show you the picture. I think flagged, it's in the Fark story. Totally if I can acceptable find it. picture. Yeah. Um, who it was flagged as child pornography, and so they simply stopped payment for his advertising for weeks. And this is an, a, during a bad year for FARC, and they, and they really needed it in the, the end of the year, and they just turned off the tap. And it took it took um, FARC a long time to even get through to Google on this whole question. And when they finally got through and were communicating with Google, Google said, well, you had the pedo bear logo also present, and therefore we considered it child pornography. Pedo bear is, a, is some kind of teddy bear that is, I guess trolls or whatever use yeah. to associate with child pornography. Anyway, there was no child pornography. They did nothing wrong, but they no, basically accused... No, it was an accused... adult actress in the photo. It was not, you know... Yeah, but they, they essentially accused Fark of committing a, a horrendous felony and cut off all the money, and Google was completely wrong, and it took forever for them to... And, 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 and Drew Curtis goes on this, you know, given that that's their business, you know, I mean, fundamentally, and I agree with Drew Curtis on this. Fundamentally, any business should take care of their customers. Google's customers are the advertisers. They're Tell off, that to Silicon Valley. They're off canceling. <laughs> they're off canceling <laughs> drone programs and building self-driving cars and all this stuff. Meanwhile, their customers are sitting there being burned and accused of felonies. Well, we've heard we've heard this story falsely. again and yep. again and yep. again in various. So here's guises. the problem I have with this. It's I think these people are incredibly foolish for running such a stupid business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? If you think 
So you're, if your sole revenue, so what they've effectively done is outsourced their advertising to Google. Mm -hmm. And so they're completely dependent on Google as their only revenue source. That is the dumbest thing you can do to your business. And in hindsight, they have no human contact with their right. sole right. source There's of no one, revenue. no one to talk to. That is a huge problem. So yeah. my problem That's here is point. you outsourced He's a not critical alone. part a of, of your business. A lot of companies, a lot of sites do this. But none of them are actually Including thinking about- a bunch about, of Macedonian teenagers on Now, know. sure, she, clearly he has accepted that it. risk. Now, there are certain parts of your business that it is wise to outsource, right? And they are things like cleaning toilets and emptying rubbish <laughs> bins and yeah. window washing the windows because they do not impact. But if you give away a key part of your business that is literally where the money comes from to another company, you have put yourself at risk to the platform. That's a good and point. this goes over and on and on. Now, when we built the business that we run or that I run at Packet Pushes, we deliberately do not run on Google Ads because I would not want to have my business at someone else's beck and call. But this happens all the time. Look at the newspapers that use Facebook as a publishing platform. It's not unusual. Yep. And they're still not smart enough to work out that they need to own the relationship yeah. with their clients, right? Yeah. Their customers are the people who read it, but your clients, and what they're saying is, yeah, we'll let Google or Facebook go and find clients and bring us money because we can sack our advertising people or the, you know, don't, if you give away your revenue. Don't put your monetization in the hand of a bot. But, but all, oh, the, all of anybody else, right? Yeah. At least it's Google. You look at someone like Time, they just signed a three-year deal for $100 million with Outbrain and I think, it, mm. you know oh, these guys? Yeah, Outbrain, Outbrain Taboola, and Gula, Kabula, Taboola, Taboola, yeah. Wow. These oh, are the this around, is how Time Magazine's monetizing? Yeah, around oh. the web stories that you see at the bottom of every web article. You might also be interested in belly fat. <laughs> these, oh. once you see them, you see them everywhere. They take you to these, they seem editorial. They take you to these mm -hmm. quasi-editorial click farms, and then they try and sell you something. And this is how yep. a lot of really highbrow journalistic sites are maintaining their websites. Yep. You know what bugs me? Google AMP. Is a which is the the idea of Google AMP was to speed up loading on mobile platforms by eliminating disgusting ad tech, elaborate, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. JavaScript punch yeah. the monkey things to pre cache uh, content so it loads instantly and it works really well. And Google's made a deal with Outbrain and Taboola so that that content will load very fast yes. too. And unfortunately, it looks like it's native uh, advertising. Yeah. It looks like content. And it's just going to fool more people. And it's just so crapped up. The, the New York Times is one of the only sites that does this right in that they have an in-house creative team yeah. that yeah. creates their own native content. Um, native yeah. content yeah. And, and that's the way to run. So here's my problem is we've seen this so many times. These people literally outsource their revenue to somebody else. And then they get into a mindset of it's because I write content on the internet, it's my privilege to make money. I don't have to think about it. Well, that's money, a good, right? you know, Greg. Dumbass business can't models with, with dumbass people. And Drew, you get I'm a dumbass sorry, but outcome. you're a dumbass. Yep. Well, but I'm that doesn't sorry. mean that. Well, yeah, I mean, it sounds better when you say dumbass. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Greg says it, he Much calls better. it like it is, but it sounds kind of high. But brow. we still need to blame Google. I mean, yes. Google, it doesn't make Google. Well, that's do Drew's, Drew's point of view is well, this is Google's business. Why are they screwing me and not just me? Like, why I mean, is he using Google instead of some other ad tech I don't company? Know why didn't he, as soon as his revenue stopped coming, why didn't he just switch ad tech providers? Yeah. No idea. I don't know anything right? about why his business Why blame Google or how many employees for his he has own or how stupidity. they work or what their model is. I don't know anything about his business. But I do know that Google is ma makes a fortune f from not having not employing human beings to provide tech support to yeah. their customers. Yeah. And I don't like the sound of that. We all then don't say use how Google. Disrupt right? I mean, don't that's, pick that's, Google. That's legit There's, ad there's over Thank 250. Thank God there's Yahoo. <laughs> yeah, but Yahoo a, uses A company you can count on back But there's 250 Yahoo. ad tech companies in the back end, yeah. like those disgusting names that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. um, who could he could have instantly, should have been able to instantly go and say, no money coming yeah, from Google, no go to another have. company, put their but ads how, on my... Exactly if that's where his revenue coming from, yeah. right? And what he should be doing right mm -hmm. now is he should be out there working on a business strategy to start selling advertising on himself himself and doing direct deals with companies to put ads on his site so that he owns his business and stop whining about, oh, Google didn't give me all the money that I earned. I and know. those pedophiles need to stop whining about, <laughs> they shouldn't have gone to Best Buy. I just think there's also a, a point that's much larger here, which is we talk about how disruptive and amazing technology is until you have a customer service complaint. Yep. And then you have zero recourse except to go sound like a whiny bitch on Twitter. Yep. And it's that was just- the funniest thing from the, uh, from that, the, the interns, or the internship, the comedy about Google, where they 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 got put on Gmail tech support, 
And I saw that in Silicon Valley, everybody burst out laughing. <laughs> because there's there no is tech, no There's no phone <laughs> number there's to no call Gmail when your Gmail support. doesn't work. <laughs> That's so funny. Why do we all rely on Gmail? Same problem. Same problem. My right. email's down. What? Who are you going to call? Exactly. And, you know, that's why most companies are choosing Office 365. So enterprise yeah. IT, they don't use Google for that exact reason, yeah. which is why Google, of course, we now Google. has an enterprise <laughs> people who would actually, but anyway. We I, I just Google. think that, you know, I, I really think that the people are, the mistake that people make is just because I managed to write something and publish it on the internet, I have a right to make money. You do not. Right? You have to write content that people actually want to read. And if you want to monetize it, you have to understand what making money is all about. And that means a sales force and selling it and managing sales. Well, at the very least, of. diversification of income streams, at yeah. the very least. If that's a 15-year-old business yeah. model in 2001, yeah, yeah, you could publish something and money would come teeming out of the sky. This is 2017. Media companies of any sort need to grow up. So Drew farked himself is what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know Drew and I don't know what fark does, but I know how the business model works. I apologize, Drew, hmm. but he's right. We still love you, Drew. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by, I'm going to monetize the heck out of this show. Let me tell you right now. Bring it home, Leo. Bring it home. Our show brought to you by those good folks at Tracker. We're all used to, who doesn't lose stuff, right? I, I saw a stat the other day. The average person spends 40 minutes a day looking, looking That's for- so me. <laughs> that is keys, so me. glasses, remote controls. Uh, all you got to do is get the Tracker. The Tracker is a cute little quarter-sized anodized aluminum device. By the way, there are other Bluetooth trackers like this. The problem with the one I'm thinking of, when the battery dies, you throw it out. It's done. You can't mm. replace the In the tracker, you can replace the battery. Ah. It's awesome. Uh, what you do is it doesn't have a GPS built into it. I want to be very clear about that. I think a lot of times people say, oh, isn't it, it's not GPS in there. You can't put GPS in that thing. What It would cost a lot more for one thing. You pair it to your phone. Your phone, the tracker software, can track up to 10 devices. I actually have my tracker attached to my keys because that's what I lose the most. You can have a couple of things it'll help you with. First of all, separation alerts. You leave your keys behind. The tracker app on your phone goes, hey, your keys, you left them behind as soon as you get 100 feet away. But it can go the other way, too. Your tracker device, if you've got your keys but you left your phone behind, can beep at you. You can even push a button on the tracker device that will make your phone yell. You get to customize that alert. Uh, if you, uh, let's see, what else? If you leave, oh, I love this. Okay, so in a lot of these devices, you leave your key. Let's say or you go to Vegas. You're, you're doing really well. You have a couple of drinks. You're playing the craps. You leave your keys at the crap table. Okay. You, you get back to the room. You look at your phone. The phone says your keys at the crap table. Problem is, since then, some guy from Muncie picked up your keys and got on a plane, and your Muncie. keys are now in Muncie. I don't know why Muncie, but that's where they are. <laughs> How would you know? Because the tracker is in your, you're in the room in Vegas. Well, here's the thing. Everybody, see that? That map has three and a half million. Go, zoom out. You can see it's all over the world. Three and a half million tracker users, uh, tracker devices out there in the wild. That means, zoom out, Karsten. Just zoom out a little bit. There you go. You can see the whole world is loaded with all over the place. Even Muncie. <laughs> so the, the the moment somebody with the tracker app on their phone walks by your keys in Muncie, their app goes, oh, there's Leo's keys. I'm not saying it happened to me. <laughs> but the app said, there's Leo's keys. And then it said to me, hey, your keys are in Muncie now. And now I know where they are. This is beautiful. This is the largest crowd GPS network in the world. Leo, I used this in Marseille when we were living in Marseille and I put it on, they have the giant European keys with the big... Yeah, the tassel. Yeah, the Love gigantic. Yeah. And I had it attached to that and I, it occurred to me that this is actually a security thing. So if I'm out and about, I lose the keys or something happens to the keys, if those keys are away from the apartment, I know that some burglar hasn't broken in and waiting for me but with the giant the knife. Apartment. If they have the apartment, <gasps> then I have it's another issue Ooh. and then I have to, yeah. So Never it's, thought of that. it's great for travelers. It really does work. You could abroad. put them in your yeah. bags. Yeah. I mean, this is you really useful. Doing? I've got, my daughter just got a retainer. It's put it, going put on it on the, the retainer. retainer case. Mom, I can't it's going on the well. case. I got a track. Why are you wearing this, Mom? It's going on the case. It, oh, put it's it in the case. case. That's a good idea. It'll really take you some time to get the Hamilton singing <laughs> yes. going around a yeah. track. That's really I, I've, I've seen these used in uh, corporate companies in paper files. Oh. And the ones that, you know, the internal mail where you have to ship a document what around. What a good idea. And when you've got a company which has got like 50 or 100 or 300 locations, where the hell is that? Oh, that's brilliant. And if you've got a piece of it, you, you pop it in and then ship it around and then you know where the hell that critical documentation is in theory. That is so cool. So, yeah. Here's the deal. Go to thetracker.com, T-H-E-T-R-A-C-K-R, -E no E, no second E, thetracker.com, promo code TWIT, and uh, buy, you know, buy all the trackers you need, but you're going to get a free one thrown in at the end when you use the promo code TWIT. A free Tracker Bravo with your order, thetracker.com. They are growing so fast. 
Um, I think he told me it's 100,000 new trackers in, in the wild every week. And it's mm -hmm. network effects. The more they grow, the, the better it is. You want them to Amplified. grow fast. It's great. Uh, what else? A couple of uh, quick quick things. Here's a, uh, I, I really like this. Uh, the iPeg guy is a designer, said this is the next Mac Pro. Upgradable. Just spread it out a little bit. I've been saying Apple should bring back the uh, cheese grater, the old Mac Pro, because it was upgradable. Mm. And Apple, well, I don't know if this year Apple is going to have an upgraded Mac Pro or if they're just going to abandon the whole line. Sometimes I think Apple what, doesn't. What are we looking at, Leo? This is this somebody's is a concept. concept. Mm -hmm. But see how it's, you could upgrade. You could It's got a real video card, so you oh. could actually change it. You could upgrade the hard drives. It's got slots for four hard drives. And it's still beautiful. You could still say, innovate my ass, or whatever it is Phil Schiller said when he introduced the Mac Pro and you stopped know, all innovation. It just strikes me the Mac Pro is probably the precursor to dongle hell. Mm. Really, it was the first. It, it was the first of the dongle hells. Yeah. Apple says that we're going to put this inside, and everything yeah. else is going to hang off this thing. Like Apple's that. Uh, the dongle industrial complex. According to mm. Ars Technica, Andrew Cunningham was very good and should know. He says Apple is planning a Netflix, and is going to do scripted TV shows. They're getting into the TV business. It actually, comes from Wall Street Journal. So let's give credit where credit is due. Uh, the Wall Street Journal. Apple sets its sight on Hollywood plans for original content. That's a hard thing to do. That's a big outlay of cash over a long period of time. Do they have the, the they have the cash. commitment? God knows. Um, as long as they make know, those shows in the Netherlands, they're set. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I wanted to upset Hollywood, what would I announce? Oh. What would I leak? So you think... Like, this is a shot across the bow. This is playing hard Trying ball. to get them to is, cooperate with Apple. Apple's. Yeah. We're Apple. You've got to come to do us this. on our terms. You won't sell us your content. We'll you won't sell own. us your content. We'll just go and do uh, like Netflix and stuff like and Amazon and make our own. Like so make, come on, Hollywood. It's leaked. It's leaked. It's not worth no, Actually, the, it's not, journal, not worth buying the journal is known for being a, a, a conduit for Apple PR. Yep. Yeah. Like they, this sounds like a PR play. Yeah, you're smart. They're actually doing business negotiations Brilliant. and saying to Hollywood, come to the table or we'll go like Amazon and Netflix and we won't need your content. Brilliant. <laughs> I think you're right. There's, they have such less, their leverage is so much smaller than it would have been in days prior when it comes to this because no, there Hollywood, are other No, 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 it was reversed. Hollywood was absolutely refusing to give Apple content for fear of them dominating the market. And they did the same thing with Netflix and with Amazon and then Netflix and Amazon just turned so around we'll and started making them. their own content. But that's we'll what I mean, it's that Apple's yeah. leverage is, is diminished. Is so. the fact that they're now yeah. using Apple, uh, Netflix and Amazon as leverage to say, sell us your content. Isn't that funny? Right? Wow, Isn't have, that? how we have... Flip that All around, right. invert that concept, right? Mm. Apple could go and start making content. And yes, you know, with repatriation on the horizon and a tax holiday from President-elect Trump, sure, what's $10 billion they invested over five years? It's not, a, it's not an issue. Still, I can't wait to see uh, Game of Phones. That's really <laughs> show. Well, all their, they do have some in, uh, original content already. They have, they have like that a, app, that app one. They have a... The, Right, the app. What is it called? The oh, app. it's got a great something name. Yeah, it's a really good name. Oh. Uh, it's a ripoff of something else. Chat room will know. We'll, we'll, we'll find out in a moment. They, yeah, they bought House Carpool Karaoke. Mm. Oh, they did? Yeah, they're, they, they're doing a 30-minute Carpool Karaoke. it and won't a, have James Corden. Right. It will, and it will have a rotating mm. So that doesn't, it, that doesn't bode well for the future no. of the content. No. Yes, that sounds like a afterthought kind of content. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think Apple wants to sell Hollywood. Apple's I think they, best move you know, would be Disney and I agree Pixar with you. and so forth. But their best move was just to what? What did Netflix do? They had no expertise in making stuff, so they gave a hundred hundred million dollars to you, Kevin Spacey. You just fund it. Make House of Cards. You just fund it. Right. You but find Becky's the right, right people. It's just such a massive upfront cash commitment to commission these works, and you you know for every success that Not, we actually see on Netflix, that I believe there's two or three shows that die. Yeah, on the vine or die in pre-production or there, know. that is the expertise is choosing the shows. Actually, Amazon does it brilliantly. They have a, a they do a bunch of pilots mm -hmm. and then they put them all up and they and they let you choose which ones are yes. going to get made. I think that's brilliant. Analytics and these yeah. plat because these platforms show they know how long people are watching for. They know whether they're binging them. They know whether they're watching right. in the evenings or they in the mornings. They know they have if, much better ratings. They, than there are even TV. things like are people actually attentive because if you're right. not online for more, like you mm -hmm. can't just press play and let it play all day. Right. It stops. Netflix actually stops. The reason it stops is so they get the analytics on whether you are actually watching. Oh, so right. So I thought they didn't stop. Yeah, no, for Netflix, a while, they didn't get, stop. They played If it through. goes for more than 60 minutes without you pressing start, uh -huh. stop, start, it'll actually pause and say, are you still here watching? And that's literally not because they want to stop streaming, partly they because they want to save there? money, but mostly mm -hmm. because the analytics, are you, are you actually watching? Yeah. Planet of the apps. Planet of the apps. Brilliant. So cute.
<laughs> Marissa Meyer leaving Yahoo's board. I don't think the merger is completed, the $4.8 billion merger. You said that Verizon isn't going to get a discount. They wanted a billion dollars off. Maybe they got one in the back end. And I know. got one in the back end, and it was no <laughs> I fun. Don't, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't. I mean, the the story is is that at the end of the day, the deal didn't fall apart. You would have thought that a breach of this. You would side, think, right? The Half deal should totally fall accounts. apart. Yahoo should be dead. There should be nails going into the yeah. coffin and people pouring, you know, sprinkling holy water on top of it because it must be cursed. And and but the, it and they've still spun makes off. Money. It Yahoo. still makes money. Yeah, but what it actually does is it makes double money for Verizon because Verizon makes money. So as the as the traffic crosses Verizon's it's, backbone, it's, yeah. Verizon can now match the content. So this is why they buy HuffPo. Oh, it's for peering? No, they sell the data about what the traffic oh, rolling their backbone yeah. to the ad tech company so they can do better your, ad targeting. Your, your data. They get 10 to 20% better targeting. They make billions. It's a 24, You're actually paying for it. It's a $24 billion market selling wow. traffic data as it crosses the internet wow. backbones. Wow. Do you guys use um, Slice? Yeah, I love slice. slice. I didn't realize they're also an analytics company. Well, because they know who's getting stuff delivered. Right, they're not so the only one either, by the way. There's another company that does it. So mm. this is a company that combs through your email uh, to see what receipts you have, and then it tells you when things it's ship, on its way. when there's a yeah. price drop. I love it. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a great um, app, but I didn't realize they are also selling the data of what's selling. And they were the ones who had that, the EarPod mm. story. Yeah, mm. what do you or bet the, that, I, they, yeah. that was their uh, original business plan? Yeah. They knew. It, all of those services should be free because they make far more money out of the back end selling the data. Well, Slice is free. It's free. Slice is free. It's free. That's how they monetize this by yeah. selling data. Yeah. So Verizon's, you know, Verizon, AT&T, those carriers are literally, it's up tens of billions of dollars industry selling your private, your data as it crosses the public backbone. Mm. Uh, the uh, the Yahoo uh, uh, stuff that didn't go to Verizon, the uh, stake in Alibaba, Yahoo Japan, is is being rebranded. It can't be called Yahoo anymore. No, nope, that's it's what they called sold. Ataba. Altaba. 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 Yeah. I think they were going to call it's Alibaba mixed yeah. with nothing. All that's left is Alibaba. All that's, that's left joke. is Alibaba. That's <laughs> right. it's an acronym. It's <laughs> the alternate left. to Alibaba. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, but Marissa's, Marissa's, I guess, going to have some time off. Well, what she? This is just a holding company. Who cares if she's on the board or not? This is yeah. not a. This is not Yahoo a, Japan doesn't need management oversight. Yeah, the Alibaba and is David Philo is gone. In fact, four other members are going to go. This is not. So a, this, this is, is a, a for Yahoo. Is this a? This is a because Yahoo won't even have a board. Verizon's the. Yeah. So well, this the, it, this is just a financial holding company. There's yeah, no this is no slam or no slag. There's no this technology. Is just, there's no, no, no developers. There's no. It's yeah. just what's yeah. next well, for the her? Yahoo Japan. Well, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. The whole well Yahoo Japan is still a technology, but it's a wholly different business. Hugely successful in Japan. But they just have a stake. But it's all in done. It. They're, there, they're right? shareholders in it. It's not like yeah. they're, they. Does go she go to a media company? Does she go to a tech company? Does VC. she go to a? She becomes a VC. Yeah, that's the that's where she does a few years. By the way, plenty of money. She's she's got a golden parachute. She's got hundreds of millions of dollars. So. She's not worried about what she's going to do next, except she would like to do something, I imagine. Uh, VC is the easy way. That's what mm -hmm. that's what happens to these people yep. a lot. But I wouldn't be surprised. She's got to be a hot number, right? Because she's a woman, high profile. There's got to be a company that she would made, love to have her as CEO. She's only had two jobs. She got as much out of Yahoo as there was to she be did as, as well as she could Does be. Does she go to YouTube? I don't know. I don't think she'd go back to Google. I think she'd move on. Yeah. She left Google under yeah. mysterious yeah. circumstances, various yeah. rumors. But I she suspected. She fashions herself a media person now. There's plenty of media companies. I will watch. Why not WAPO? With interest. You know, what a challenge would it be to go and work for Amazon? Go or for Bezos? Go work for Bezos? I, you know, she could be vice Google. president. Nobody hey. wants to work for Bezos. <laughs> Really, I think you're right. You're a robot. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> hey, we're done. This has been really fun. Ooh, wow. Uh, wow, what a great panel. In fact, everybody's agreeing. Best twit ever. Oh. <laughs> so. Uh, the chat room said, I like this Greg guy. I like this Greg guy. He calls him like he sees him. Yeah. Not yeah. oh, my fault. Yeah. Couldn't do it. He talks funny, but I like him. <laughs> Greg Farrow is at the Packet Pushers Net, packetpushers.net. Net. That's it. Tell me about the podcast. Uh, the podcast is uh, Enterprise IT. We focus on deep dives on the technology. Uh we mainly focus on data networking. We do a bit of a news show. There's a network break. We've got the data noughts, which is about private cloud and public cloud and how is a, if you're a network, a, an IT professional, you might want to listen to our shows and learn more about building your career and that is get some wisdom around left and right, you know, around your core competency in the industry as a whole. Love it. By the way, they're great shows. Must listen. And Greg makes them fun. It makes them <laughs> interesting. No, you do. You're we really don't good. take them too seriously. Yeah. No, and yeah. I like that. Yep. Mike Elgin is writing, 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 computer world, fast company, et cetera, et cetera. 
And traveling, traveling, traveling soon. Yes, soon, uh, soon off to Europe again. And I also have the Fat Cast, which is a podcast about food and technology, How's technology that going? and food. It's going great. It's been on hi hiatus for about a month and a half. Coming back. You've tomorrow. been a little busy with a granddaughter. Yes, ah. yes, yes. And How so, uh, t almost two months. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, That's cool. Yes, yeah. Ke his son Kevin and uh, his wife Nadia and yes. beautiful. Mm. We're grooming her to be an Uber geek princess. Oh. Super geek. Squishy Super geek. face. Princess squishy face. <laughs> P like squishy it. face. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Get the fat cast. It's on fat iTunes and everywhere <laughs> else. Yes. And as uh, mm -hmm. Edbo says, if you love technology, you'll want to subscribe. And Becky Worley, you can see her every morning on Good Morning every, America. Practically every morning. Lot. Lots of mornings. Yep. More and more all the time covering consumer technology, uh, consumer ripoffs. <laughs> Chilling her body to a temperature, an ungodly yes. temperature. I am the, uh, Robin Roberts calls me Mikey. Give it to Mikey. Mikey will try Mike. it. <laughs> Mikey will try it. Uh, I'm B Worley on Twitter. You know what I'm doing mostly? I'm coaching. I was coaching girls soccer in the fall. I'm coaching boys rugby right now. Oh, and I'm fun. going back to coaching girls soccer again in the spring. You love sports. You oh. love playing. And you, I'm sure it's fun to coach. I have so much fun doing it. That's it's just, neat. it's, it's amazing. So it's, you're actually a soccer mom. I am. I have the minivan. I pick them all up. <laughs> it's the Cadillac take them. minivan. It is. It is. It has heated seats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. What she's not telling you, she's actually doing consumer research. She's watching all the kids That's in the back right. and what they're using and how they run. Actually, That's right. you can right. learn a lot selling from kids these days. Selling these days. Selling these days. Instant selling research them. every day. Yeah. Well, at least I know who the good kids are. <laughs> oh no, you can't play date there. No, <laughs> mommy knows. Yeah. Mommy's got a margarita right. in that thermos. And That's right. Big mother. All knowing. We do uh, This Week in Tech every Sunday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 2300 UTC. If you want to stop by and watch live, you can watch on our, our own website, twit.tv. But you can also, we're on YouTube Live now, youtube.com slash twit. Just got the silver button for 100,000 plus subscribers. Woo. Thank you. Woot, woot. They sent me kind of a snide, snarky note. Susan Wojcicki sent me a note saying, well, it's okay. I mean, it's not a million. <laughs> oh. But it's it's a pretty good number for somebody over 16. Yeah. So good good for you, Leo. Good for you. You're trying hard. I feel like it was a participation button. Right. And you replied and said, well, YouTube is nice, but it's not 23 and me. That's an awesome <laughs> company run by your sister. Oh, that would hurt. Right. That would be, uh, cool that would hurt. Yes, yes. Yeah, and mom, who let, mom, yeah. got it all started by leasing her garage to these young guys, Sergey and uh, yep, yep. Oh, Larry. And, and she's were, an educational powerhouse. And she's yeah. looking to follow she's her. Awesome. They're amazing. Plus. Yeah, she's great. Uh, uh, now you've completely thrown my uh, train of thought i was telling you about the show where youtube to find you. you where to find us uh we're all the shows are on youtube as well uh after the fact of course your podcast client can find twit easily enough if you want to be here live though join us in the chat room irc.twit.tv or join us in studio We've got a great studio audience really the best looking studio audience i think we've ever had <laughs> just email tickets at twit.tv and we'll make sure we have a seat out for you Thanks for being here, and we'll see you next week. Another twit this is, is in the can. Yay! Yay. Yay.